Banana Bunch, you know what time it is. It's time for another episode of the Jungle Gyms Podcast. I'm your host, Mark. Welcome to the show. We got a new cable on here right now, and you'll find out why throughout this episode, unfortunately. Sipping on a little hint water. Have you tried that yet? Well, you're gonna you're gonna meet John from Hint today. Uh, I'm excited about that. I really love these. It's like it's just regular water, not sparkling, uh, with a little infusion of a fruit essence. Uh, that's their wording, not mine. Uh, but it's really delicious. I'm trying the blackberry today. But before we launch in, we got to go through some deals in the store. There's a couple new things that we've got brought in here, but one I'm particularly excited about is we now have our own jardiniera, a little hot jard, baby. Uh, and if you've been making delicious sandwiches, you know that's the truth. And even I, someone who's not necessarily always crazy about the flavor of peppers, I can appreciate this, but it comes in in three different versions. We got it on sale for 50 cents off this week. We have a mild, a hot, and an extra hot. So you can check those out. Make yourself like a nice Italian sandwich. And then... Uh, that sounds really good, actually. And conveniently, we have some baked French bread also on sale this week for only a buck ninety nine a loaf. So maybe get that loaf, a little hot jar, some uh, Italian meats and stuff like that. I uh, I grabbed in our closeouts this week. I found a uh, boar's head charcuterie. I'll call it a board. It's really just a multi pack of different flavored salamis. Really delicious. You'll see me test it out with our first guest today. I'm trying to think some other fun ones. Wow, Ghost Energy drinks are on sale. If you're an energy drink enthusiast, you got to check those out. I know we just recently launched their hydration line, which has no caffeine in it. Heads up on that. 99 cent Southern Butter Tasting Biscuits. You know, you'd think I'd read this more in detail first, but I always do. And then as I'm looking at it again for the bit, I'm just like, oh, that's also a good deal. And Pepsi's out here just killing it, I feel like, every week with uh, buy two, get one free on their six packs of 16.9 ounce bottles. All kinds of stuff. Oh, the I, I always love when this one shows up too. It's Valentina Hot Sauce. If you haven't tried that, it's really great. It's out in International. Uh, that's on sale for a buck ninety nine. And uh, something that I just purchased that's off camera. We've got uh, these... Just, I mean, it's super simple, but I love a good tuna salad. I've got chunk light tuna for like 80 cents a can, but the best part about it, as silly as this sounds, is not even necessarily the product inside the can. It's a fact that it's one of the only pull tab style tuna cans in existence, uh, at least being sold regularly. I'm just, I, I always feel like something happened during COVID as far as production, because I really haven't seen much of those in the last like four or so years, but anyway, crazy. So this week we got a stacked episode, it's a big one. So I'm gonna drop in the, uh, if you're watching along on YouTube, I'll put little uh, timing notes in there. And if you're on the audio version, I'll have the time codes listed in the uh, show notes. Uh, because it is too big one. So I, a friend of the show, Johnny Catalano, comes back in here. He brought me some wine to sit with him, which is really nice. He's talking about his upcoming film festival event for the Plaza Theater up in uh, nearby Miamisburg, Ohio. Johnny was on a couple months ago talking about a few other events that he had had going on uh, and all that. And then, as I mentioned, the big feature this week is Hint Water. So I brought a John from Hint Water. It was great. Um, yeah, that's awesome. You know what? Let's just dive into the first segment, and then we'll talk more about the Hint Water thing right before we come on. So in the meantime, let's say hi to Johnny. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, it was a, it was a pleasure last time. Uh, I'm excited to, you know, chat some cinema with uh, some... Uh, can I do the interview? Yeah, please. <laughs> no, of course. I'm, I'm excited. You're excited. I want you to capture that excitement. I, I'm very excited because <laughs> I very rarely do I get to talk about Coppola wine in front of an audience, not live audience, but audience. Um, well, there's like two people in the chairs. There's two people in the chairs <laughs> who are watching. I don't know if they could hear us, but... Um, <laughs> purposely, no. Purposely. Uh, but, you know, Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. One of the greats. Yeah. One of the great directors. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar, you know, the Godfather, Godfather Part 2. All the good Godfathers. All the good and, Godfathers. <laughs> and uh, I, the Godfather Part 3 is okay. It is crazy that they didn't make it a complete trilogy as yeah, far as my it's, canon. It's really, it's really peculiar. Weird, I never even thought of that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, Sofia Coppola, I actually love her films too. Yeah, she's great. She, I, I think she's terrific. Um, and uh, The Conversation, one of my favorites. And, oh, of course, great Apocalypse course. Now. Right. Rumble, I'm not going to go down the whole list of Coppola yeah. films. Films, but you know everyone watching is like we get it yeah. you guys are nerds for film like, you're <laughs> right we are we love it and we're here for that yeah we're here for that that's what we're here to talk about you yeah. know um and he's also a paisan you know he's a fellow yeah italiano <laughs> uh you know he makes films 
I can. Re- I love it. So you know, uh, here he makes wine as well. Yeah. That's kind of how he made a lot of his fortune. Mm-hmm. If you look up like the highest, you know, gross or you know, the richest directors of all time. Yeah, he's on he's, that list. He's on that list, and like it's kind of weird if you look at his his history. He's he's bankrupted himself many times for his for his cinema for his art. Yeah, the beauty of art. The beauty of art, in which I really respect him. He's actually producing uh, his own film now with his own. I money. cannot wait to see that. I, I want to see it so badly. Are you guys going to screen it at the Plaza? I would love to. I, I anything I could do to support him, and and I don't know when it's coming out. He's kind of being like kind of, uh, you know, it's like a little enigmatic game. on purpose. But Sorry, yep, there we go. Oh, perfect. All right. That's the part everyone <laughs> likes to watch yeah. happen is when Mark leans over the table. Well, you know, I got to hear me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure you're crystal clear, baby. Yeah. I, well, I I want to be crystal clear just to, you know, just to reiterate <laughs> that uh, Megaopolis is coming out soon and you should go see it if you love cinema. And I'm pretty sure cinema. that stars my favorite person that I am claiming is a giant, Adam Driver. Yeah. 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 Adam Driver is <laughs> I'll in send it. you the clip. Yeah. Oh, please do. With all the hair. With it's all the, the hair. hair. Yeah. It's, it's the voice. Yeah. The voice. Good the soup. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good soup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was recently in Ferrari, which I haven't seen yet, which I'm a big I Michael I want to see that fan. too. Yeah. Adam Driver's a killer. Sorry. I know we derailed already on that. But. We're derailing. I'm just going to pour the wine. Let's so do it. Let's we'll do start it. with wine. So this, this one's called Cinema. I don't know what that flavor is, but I'll pour Ooh. yours first. I almost want to try and shatter this in my voice. Oh, wine pro right there. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Cheers. Yeah, you have to. Can't bruise the fruit of the wine, yeah, but what I can one. do is take the glass with the most water spots on it. Yes. Well, I appreciate <laughs> that. As a germaphobe, I really appreciate that. You can swig it around. Mm. We've talked many times about um, on, you know, Messenger or, you know, chats about Sideways, our love for the film. Yeah, sideways. I'm sorry we haven't done that episode still yet because I think that's no, a good one. We'll save that. We'll yeah, save we'll get that. To it because Alexander Payne, another killer. Yeah, another killer who came out with a pretty solid film this year, um, The Holdovers. Oh, yeah. I, like, I, I haven't seen it yet. But oh, you I'd haven't? Like okay. So, I, mean, I haven't, like, good. done anything for yeah. re- leisure really outside yeah. of a trip to Nashville last week. Oh, well, that's pretty fun. Let's give it a taste. Oh, baby, yeah. I'm cheersing Good. to the people walking by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, to cinema. Ooh. <laughs> and to Coppola. Yes, cheers to that. Oh, baby, that's good. Mm, it's well, like a know, little oak to it. Yeah, I definitely get a, a, a heavy wood note. Yeah. Oh, here, I'll crush it. Right we got the Catalano yeah. pour here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, and while you're doing that, I'm going to open because uh, conveniently today, you're not the only Italian I deal with, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. store owners. But yeah, we got I, a guy here, right? Okay. Everybody's got a guy, and his name's Lou. And Lou does Lou. All, all kinds right. of merchandising and cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And Lou also gets really great deals. And so today, what I'm opening right now for you audience that are watching along, if you're listening, I'll just tell you. Yeah. Uh, but it's a little charcuterie pack because I feel like that's now... Oh, they're all individual. That's actually even better. Cool. Right. I'll tell you what. I'll give you one or two. Thank you, sir. I think that was the... I honestly don't know. We'll uh, this one's all. the peppered. Yeah, it's Genoa salami, Bianca Dioro, uh, which is a dry salami from... That's one of my favorites from Borsa. Yeah. has almost like a nutmeg flavor. Mm. And then it's all salami. So no cheese in this one, but... No cheese. That's this is right. like a $15 charcuterie board that yeah. Lou has on sale for like $5. Lou, so. that's... Uh, my son's name is... Shout out to my son, Louie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my not son Lou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to all the Lou's out there. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> I don't know why I just yeah. kept I just put them on the table. I was like, yeah. oh, so we'll snack on these a little we'll bit while we're talking. Yep. So while we're doing this, so you are here because you've got uh, a little festival coming up. I do. I don't I mean do. little. I don't mean that that way. It, it like, could be little. It could be big. You I know? didn't. Yeah, I was yeah. like, it's just so bad. I'm like, I always feel like I'm like, oh, I'm, I didn't mean that <laughs> derisively. You're, you're all good, Mark. I mean, it's. Uh, it is a it's a festival uh, regarding film. It's a yeah. film festival. Oh, I think this is the one. Uh, and a little self promotion there, kind of Cecil B. DeMille, uh, kind of, you know, uh, who's another director? John Carpenter asked. It's called Catalano Film Festival. Love it. Um, the branding's great, by the way. Thank you. Thank really, you. I, uh, it's like simple, unique, to yeah. the point, it, bold. Exactly. It's it's all those things, and it was like. It took me a while. So when I first got my my film company, yeah, uh, when I began it, I, I like just thought about a bunch of names I could have possibly named it, and you know 
I thought of several names, maybe something relating to one of my favorite films or something like that. And then at the end of it, I was just like, why don't I just call it, you know, Catalano Film Company? Yeah. Because I feel like the name has a music to it. Yeah. And, and uh, it is your company. That's how yeah, those sorts of things work. it is my work. company and it is my name. So it, it just all kind of fell into that. And then, yeah, so then when I started this festival, which I'd say began. So I, there's, I'll talk about the history after I eat this salami. Sure. Yes, please eat the yeah, salami. I'll, I'll try the salami. So. Um, yeah, it yeah it's a film nice festival. Too. Just 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 to get it all out there right. first. Um, it's a film <laughs> festival <laughs> um, that centers around regional film. Cool. Um, and that's something I'm very passionate about. I believe in uh, deeply. Yeah. Um, just the ability to uh, make films outside of the mainstream, outside of the Hollywood system, outside of the you know New York film machine, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. And much like the films. directors we love, like yeah. Coppola, I like know? Coppola, um, which was always his mission, right? I mean, with American Zoetrope and everything, yeah, to make these small independent films um, outside of the system. So that's that's been my dream as well, and because um, I feel you get the most autonomy there. You know, you get yeah. the most freedom. You get the most. Um, it's probably like the most genuine freedom. version of the vision the mm -hmm. creator of, or the artist has. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Because when nobody's telling, when you don't have to make a film by committee, mm -hmm. you're making a film. You're making right. a piece of art. So that's the center. And um, when I came on here last time, yeah, John Russo was coming to the plaza. There. Yeah, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was went great. It was a terrific event. He was a lovely man. Um, I drank wine with him, so that was that's cool. That was fun. Yeah. Um, we got pizza. It was great. Cool. What a good experience. Um, it was awesome. It was a really terrific experience. And for, I will mention John A. Russo, uh, a writer, screenwriter mm -hmm. for Night of the Living Dead, in uh -huh. case you didn't see the last episode mm -hmm. of Johnny. So, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm, I'm here giving the I'm footnotes. Just, to, that's what I'm here yeah, for. Yeah, it's perfect. You. You're doing great. Thank you. I'm just assuming everyone's already watched it. Um, they should have. They should have. If they, so if you go back, <laughs> link below. Uh, but, yeah, John Russo, he's, he's, he, he co-wrote Night of the Living Dead with George A. Romero. Yeah. Um, he's also a regional filmmaker, legend of filmmaking in his own right. Yeah. Um, and he's coming again. He's coming as the first special guest, uh, to premiere on one of his films, uh, a documentary actually about his life and career. Oh, cool. Which I'm really, really excited to actually, um, uh, you know, I've seen kind of the, uh, the raw foot, the raw cut, um, just like to see if it, like it fits in the festival and everything like that. And of course it did. Uh, but I'm really excited to see like the finished product, see where it all, um, kind of turns, but because his life is really interesting, you know, uh, as a regional independent filmmaker, uh, working, you know, well before the age of digital, well before sure. the age of when it's, you know, much easier to make a film, he somehow did it. And, uh, his, his life, um, you know, he was in the army, which is something I can also relate to, uh, yeah. being, uh, in the army. Uh, and you know, just, just points of his life was ups and downs, uh, sure. which I really, I like when filmmakers have those are, you know, honest about those ups and downs. Sure. And he is, and which I really appreciate. Um, cause I think you have to have some reasonable amount of, uh, of, we were just talking about this earlier before we started recording failure. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can't be scared of failure as an artist because gonna happen oh you know for sure I mean? it's it, it, that is the guarantee more than success or it's, it's the it's the absolute guarantee because yeah. like no matter who you look at as in in the history of art film whatever you want to look at they've all had their failures yeah. you know what i mean they've all had those films that people are like why did they make that right or like this is a financial failure right. or this is a uh, critical failure um the best of them you yeah, know so that's what the film's really about and uh of course his his creation of the modern zombie which yeah. I mean, without so him cool. wouldn't have happened. Right. Um, so, you know, that's really cool. And uh, not to mention, you know, he's going to be there Q and a, um, at the Catalano film, at festival. the Catalano okay. film festival. I wanted to make sure I was yeah. clear on that. Too. That's even better. Catalano film festival. <laughs> I'm drinking to that too. <laughs> yeah. um, so he's going to be there. Um, <laughs> and I'm also bestowing him a, um, Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Which I'm proud to. Uh, this is the first time I'm actually announcing it on, uh, you know, just on air, on oh, social cool. media. So uh, this, to me, I'm going to name the award in his 
in his honor. That's amazing. Um, yeah, he deserves from here that. on That's out. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think so, and because um, I think he's a regional filmmaker we could all look up to. Yeah. Um, I think Night of the Living Dead's a masterpiece. Uh, I'm going to call it the Johnny Russo Lifetime Achievement Award. That's from amazing. Here and out. So, yeah, of course, he's going to be the first one of course. to receive it. That's cool. We're also doing a couple other industry awards. Yeah. Um, you, Mark, are among them. Ooh. If I can be so drink bold. to that, too? Yeah. All right, uh, be bold. Yeah, for Ooh. your, you know, unwavering support of uh, independent film, Listen, um, which is really, 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 really important. Um, I love to make them. I love yeah. to be in them. Mm-hmm. I love to watch them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Art's cool. Yeah. It's one of those things that we, the digital age has been, look, there's pros and cons to everything. Yeah. yeah. But what I really like is that it has given a platform for a lot of people that otherwise were platform less. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, it's beautiful. So first off, thank you. I'm honored. I, yeah. I'm a little, I'm a little stammering. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. oh, I don't know. I'm like, how do I emote on camera? Yeah. It's the one time when it's genuine. You yeah. can't do it. No, but if yeah, you need me to absolutely. cry over someone I don't have, I can do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Johnny. Truly, yeah. that means a lot. Yeah, it, it means a lot to me that, you know, you've been very kind. Like, even before I came on the show, like, you let me use the studio space oh, and, yeah. and all that stuff um, to record some podcast stuff. Yeah. Um, which, you know. It doesn't go unnoticed. It doesn't go. Uh, well, you thank know. you. No, I really that means a lot to me too. Because yeah. like I, I look, I always said I'm like if I have all these toys, they're not fun if I don't have anybody to play with them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you're using your platform for the best. I think. Uh, well, thank as you. Far I'm trying like, at least. I I think so. Just thank like you. from the outside looking in, you know, it's it, it to me. It just you know you have to whatever kind of powers were given in this yeah. in this industry. Uh, I hope that you know we use them to boost others to empower others to you know yeah that that's what the whole concept of the film festival is i've had the luxury of uh kind of building it um and uh having a great relationship with the plaza theater these past three years yeah um you're killing it with that too it's cool i, I love seeing them I, and i'm starting to see their posts more and more frequently in my feed uh, and they're like yeah. hey we're working on this thing hey we're doing this i think yeah. it's so cool yeah oh yeah it's it's nothing but going up you know what i mean yeah. um we got a new projector 4k projector awesome um this this film festival is going to be all um in dcp digital cinema package cool. which i mean which is one of my least favorite things to export <laughs> yes <laughs> Luckily, they they are uh, they're going to we're gonna do it on like the desktop at the theater, which oh, you know be, yeah, it, way easier. Oh my gosh! The last year last year was I, I it was so stressful because I was just like export. I was like sending the project to the plaza. Yeah, because I didn't like, work for them officially. At sure, the time. I was sending them the project, and I was like, I didn't even know if it sent when I was driving to the theater <laughs> for the film like, festival. The best. Yeah, yeah, I was oh hoping. For, it, it, you, I, that's I, the get used to failure moment, though. Yes. That's like one of those things. Yeah. Look, that you're speaking. To to an experience I think we've all shared as creators where you're like, you're under the gun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're at the last minute and you have to cross that finish line one way or another. And like, I'm yeah. sure that you driving over there were doing the thing that so many of us would do, which is, yeah. what's my backup plan? I, there, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. what am I going to do if this doesn't? Yeah. So yeah. that's, but I'm glad it worked out great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it all worked out perfect. But like, I think I threw up before. Yeah. Uh, and, and we have to. We were doing it yeah. together ritually yeah, yeah, before we did the right, podcast. Yeah. Just like yeah. all of my guests. Yeah, exactly. That's what you got. You got to purge. Yeah. Uh, no, I just, that is not an endorsement. No, 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 of, no. Of course. This uh, is all, yeah. all for the sake of humor. No <laughs> no shade to anyone struggling. Right. I, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it. it's, it's that kind of like... Uh, I don't even know what you want to call it, but um, resourcefulness, that kind of... Yeah. Uh, you on your feet, baby. Entrepreneurship, whatever you want to call it, is that you also you have to wear like so many um, hats when you're... Uh, we've talked about this before. Yeah. You have to wear so many hats when you're an independent artist. Um, you have to be your own marketer. Right. Um, so, you know, hope, you know, went down the line, if I make if I ever made a film for, say, like a studio or something like that, I, I feel like letting it go into the hands of say their marketing team is going to be maybe a little out of, out of, it's going to be an out of worldly thing for me. Cause yeah. I'm so used to doing my own. I'm so used to creating my own graphics. I'm or graphic designs. I'm so used to making my own posts. I'm so used to doing all this because yeah. that's just how I came to be as an artist. And yeah, um, well, I think it's the case for a lot of us too. Yeah. You know, it's funny because 
it's a weird thing because I think every so often people will say things like, oh, does that make artists control freaks? Does that make you a control freak? Yeah. Like, hey, Mark, does that make you? you know? yeah. And the thing is, it's never about, at least in my experience, I feel like I can probably speak for us both. Mm -hmm. It's like not about control. It's about there's a task that needs yeah. to be done and mm -hmm. I cannot rely on anyone else to necessarily do it the way that I want it done. 100%. Because it's representing you, yeah. you know? And like, this is my baby, yeah. you know? 100%. I don't tell anybody how to parent. I just laugh at privately. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I could be completely messing it up, but, um, we'll and find out it will find out. And some people can even down to like, maybe not something as drastic as a child, being born. but, uh, this is uh, why I don't have any though. Honestly, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to screw that one. Well, you have a dog. So yeah, exactly. You, you, I was like, I'm going to ruin him. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, yeah. he's, he's getting good. He yeah. knows about the cheese curd stash. Right. It's a real yeah. problem. Yeah. It's a real problem. <laughs> but, um, uh, so uh, with the graphic, does it like, I'm sure there's people out there like, Oh, it's always like, this or that, like, why do you always have to do this or that? Well, you know, that's the whole point of art. It's, it's completely, you should be do, pleasing yourself first. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, yeah. if you're not like the red, so like the red is the aesthetic, red wine, red shirt. Yep. It's the aesthetic of the Catalano film festival. Yeah. Uh, it always will be, uh, I find red to be one of the boldest, um, just colors. Yeah. Uh, it's a color of passion. It's a color of passion, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, it, well, I mean, and I mean that because it is, it's like vibrant. Uh -huh. And in my opinion, it's representative of the work that you're trying to do and mm -hmm. your care, concern, love, respect for film in general. Yeah. And then obviously the extra focus on it being regional. Yeah, absolutely. I, it, it, I'm glad you you said, Pat, because like I never, I try not to like, I guess I just do things. Yeah. I don't even like really think. But it like, was either that or yeah. spaghetti sauce, yeah. honestly. <laughs> and I was like, both seem accurate, but yeah. It could be that, uh, but you, you actually, uh, I just remember when I was in high school uh, on the IFC channel. Yeah, you know, I recorded a Clockwork Orange, right? Oh yeah, and I remember turning it on and just having a red screen and with that great synth score by uh, Wendy Carlos. Yeah, uh, just on the screen for like thirty seconds, sure. just straight. It's just the most it. For me, I'm like, that was like a, oh, that's the type of stuff I want to do. I get it, though. Yeah. It's, and it's that's like a cool, it, look, it's a little of that, like, kind of, like, 70s vibe a little mm -hmm, bit, too. But, yeah. again, like I was saying earlier, it's, like, it's bold. It's, yeah. it's like, stark. It, it stands out. I think I, I love the look of it. Yeah, you know, something you. that we haven't even mentioned at the, uh, this far. So, obviously, it's at the Plaza Theater in mm -hmm. Miamisburg, Ohio. Yeah. When is it? <sighs> <laughs> I, I gotta make sure that. I get all the promo out <laughs> in the proper way, Johnny. I was like, ah! yeah, that's a good. Uh, so it's March 9th. Okay. Um, it the doors open at uh, 12 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. Okay. Um, and so it's pretty much like an all day event. Um, so don't let that like either scare you or uh, dissuade you. You don't have to stay for the whole thing. Sure. It's a festival. Yeah. It, it'd just be like if you went to the like say like the wine festival here. Um, you yeah, know, come you and could rage for a little bit. Come and rage for yeah. a little bit. Come and go. Um, take your pictures. You gotta, you know what I mean. Yeah, post yeah. on social. Oh yeah, we have we have all it de decorated That's and everything. Awesome. Um, so it feels like a real um event, you know. Uh, and by event, I mean like, you know, uh, well, you'll be screening films. Screening I'm films. Assuming you're doing stuff like Q and A's with some Q of the directors. Q and A's, uh, awards. Yeah. Um, and then um. We're doing a special late night um, screening of Night of the Living Dead oh, uh, at the very oh, end when everything awesome. closes out. Like that sounds amazing. Yeah, so it's just going to be like twelve to like ten p.m. most likely. Okay, um, just depending on how and long that that late take. screening would start after ten. Are you saying or yeah? Would it be, so oh, it would start yeah. after. So it's like a legit late night screening with that's John so cool. Russo yeah, and the amazing. audience. You know, it's going to be it's just going to be a blast. You know, it's 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 really meant to just be. A celebration. I've always, yeah. I always try to make this event. So it comes once a year. It's annual. Yeah. Um, and I try to make it a celebration to all of everybody. Like you work with them. I work with them. Just all of our cohorts, all of our peers. It's a celebration of the work they've worked on all year. It's kind of a culminating event. That's so cool. Um, so th I just want to maintain that. You yeah. know what I mean? I try to keep it with as many regional filmmakers that I respect and that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, some people approach me, I approach some others. Um, it's, it's been by, uh, invitation. Yeah. Um, these past few years. Uh, and I like to keep it that way because yeah. I don't believe in the, Oh, pay me 40 bucks. Right. I might pick your film or not. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's cynical. Uh, of course, I charge ticket price because yeah, because there's. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah. it, it's one of those things where 
obviously there's yeah. a business angle to it this, is ten dollars right? you know yeah, what i mean it's you, not ten dollars like, for the whole day yeah. where you can meet you know and greet with all it's a mixer yeah all at the end of the day it's a, it's a networking it's a thing too which is yeah. you look dude i think about this you know we were talking about the failures thing beforehand yeah but i realistically think sometimes i say this a lot where i'm like i don't think i'm necessarily particularly talented uh -huh. but i think i got where i am in my career because i just kept showing up and trying yeah and yeah. was okay with failing right i kind right. of like i was like oh no is the baseline yes is the exciting right you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. otherwise like showing up or not showing up i'm always at that baseline yeah. but if i show up there's a potential it goes like this yeah. Yeah. you know uh, that's a great 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 point I, I i whatever success i've had is not because of like said talent it's because of uh i'm it's a hunger. Yeah. You got to have a hunger. And you are talented, to, to, to be clear. Well, and so are you. I Thank mean, you. like, I obviously, it. everybody has kind of, like, you know, um, their their talents and their, um, you know, obviously. You know, yeah. or, or I don't think you would. You, you want to pursue film because you want, you have a, it's a burning passion. Yeah. It's, it's nothing to There's do with me. There's a story I want to tell. Story I want to tell. An ex, a theme an idea. It's some sort of expression, right? Yeah, and some I, sort I feel of like expression. for the most part, it does dive to a, an emotional level, even yeah. if it's on a very personal note. Mm -hmm. We're like, here's yeah. something that I respond to and I want to see if other people respond to it. Too, uh, yeah, know? absolutely. I mean, even like with the festival, I try to make it as much of a, uh, with the music I use, with the imagery I use, I try to make it as much of an artistic expression yeah. of me as possible because for me, it's my annual, uh, I may not make a film every year, but this festival is every year. So right. like, this is my annual expression of who i am as an artist yeah um and the showing up thing like i remember when i first got out of college to any expiring filmmakers out there uh i, I don't know if you had a similar experience but i got a film production degree yeah and had no idea what to do with it you sure. know yeah. uh it's just like and okay here we go yeah. to youtube right yeah. <laughs> youtube here we come so you know i would just whoever had an independent film production going on i would show up not get paid, uh, the typical kind of like hunger thing. You know what yeah. I mean? You just showed up. And I'll tell you, some of them were rough, man. It was like uh, cold. It was early. Yeah. Uh, it was just, I, but I look back at those moments with like a lot of, I love it. You know what I mean? I look back at them with a lot of um, uh, favorably, yeah. you know, because to me it was, I love that communal uh, experience of making a film yeah. Um, and that kind of like, we're all working towards kind of that one sure. singular goal of e even if the film didn't turn out great, you know what I mean? Which yeah. I'm sure we've all been a part of. I joked with you off yeah. camera and I'll say it for the audience. I bury one production of mine <laughs> a year at least. It's like a guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. I almost, and it's not out of, just things don't go the way. Look, that's mm -hmm. the sort of nature of independent creation in yeah. general, where you're like, okay, there's not a lot of money in this. Right. It might not come out the way you want, but you should always uh, look. I, even the ones that I hate making, mm -hmm. or well, I love making them, but even when I hate the outcome, yeah. I'm just like, you know what I learned on this one? Here's what I learned, and here's what I can do better next time. Absolutely, I think that's what you should always take out of it. Of anything, out of anything in life, yeah. In, in like the uh, the whole, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but like Kubrick with Fear and Desire, right? He, like, it was his first film he made when he's like, I don't know, 23, 24. Right, 25 maybe I don't know but he was young mid 20s um, and uh, he went his whole career trying to suppress like the fact that that, ev that film even existed yeah um, which I don't think was in my mind the right thing to do yeah because I think it's more powerful to know a guy who made Fear and Desire which you know make an independent film in 1954 or something like that you can't even imagine much that harder like, yeah much harder like now I'm like oh I got the camera in the film right, right. here yeah you know? and it's very technically competent you yeah. know what I mean um, I, th I understand he's like uh, but like the, it's more inspiring to know that guy a little, a little more than a decade later make 2001 a Space Odyssey crazy thing about it like to and me like revolutionize yeah. all kinds of stuff that later yeah. It set the pave. It paved the way for things, all kinds of stuff. Oh my gosh! Right? I think about yeah. the effects work. That that's a whole. Well, you and I should just do a whole 2001 oh, episode yeah. one day. I think that for we sure. have a lot of fun. Yeah, with that. I I watch that film. Your yeah. I try to see it in theaters as often as I can. Yes, me too. It's great. Um, I want to play it this year at the Plaza. Uh, don't know when. Uh, yeah. we, we do a Century of Cinema pro, uh, oh, cool. program, and uh, this Wednesday's McCabe and Mrs. Miller. I should get you favorites. connected with my buddies that do. Uh, they have a brand called. Uh, 
I brand. I just don't know how to call it. Secret but, base. Uh, yeah, secret yeah, base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Secret base. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I should connect with Andy and mm-hmm. Ian. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel yeah. like that'd be some good collabs too. Oh, absolutely. Um, they're doing their first secret screening, so it's like yeah, you know, they've been doing regular ones for a while, but yeah. they're great guys. Mm-hmm. So fun time. So mm-hmm. that'd be cool too. We'll get that connected. They play some really great stuff too. Okay, so wait. Let's get a couple things out of here before we run out of time. So. Mm-hmm. Plaza Theater. Yep. March 9th. March 9th. Tickets are $10. Can okay. you get them online or you have to just you get can. them at the door? So or do you go, get them online? You can get it both at the door and online, but I, you know, I always recommend getting them per, before. Of course. Um, so uh, you can go to myplazatheater.com. Okay. Um, so with our interface, you have to go to uh, the date. Okay. So go click down. Uh, when, go when to March 9th, yeah. March 9th. Click on it. Then click the, um, the date. And then it will take you to uh, the, or the time, the date. And um, click that, and then it'll take you to a way to purchase it. Um, Amazing. Easy. Um, and, of course, you can always get them there. But, again, I don't know how the crowds are going to be. Yeah. So. It's a, and it's a unique time of event. So, yeah. I always, I'm with you. I'm like, I'm just going to get them online in advance. Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. You know what I mean? No sweat, no there's hassle. Four, there's four world premieres. Of, oh, no kidding. Of, of, yeah. So, there's four world premieres of, of both short and feature films. Cool. We have um, Cam Marshall. I don't know if you know him. I know Cam not super well, but like. Yeah, like just by association. So, he's he's premiering one of his feature films. Cool. Um, and then we have a few um, uh, just to, you know, Max Kaplan. Um, uh, and, another uh, name. I would say I know Cam you know. probably better than Max, but like yeah. another name I see yeah. often. Joe Cox, which I know we you. We love know. Joe Cox. Yeah. Joe Cox, I think, in. Joe, if you're listening, uh, he makes always the favorites of yeah. like the festival. Hey, he's a great filmmaker. Like he 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 really is. He's really found a stride in, in making very very entertaining um, films, and I yeah. would love to see him make you know a longer form film here soon because I think he would be. Uh, I think people I think people respond to it for yeah sure. for sure yeah because his, his stuff's always. Um, I think he's a really good solid uh just kind of entertaining like just entertainment yeah you know like he he gives you the goods yeah so we love it and put that's the goods on the table put you know? the goods on the table and like i want to i want to make like this festival is very much centered around oh uh, go for right. it oh you're good yeah. yeah you're good uh this film this this festival's i there's actually a lot of horror films oh. uh hail house productions is is premiering a film I want to make a horror film, but I don't like the genre generally. So I'm like, yeah. that's kind of why I want to make one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's an interesting reason to make it. It's like, it's just not that I hate it or anything, but I'm yeah. just not like. It's not your. Right. Nor am I. Like, I like horror films a lot. When it's, like, when you meet like a real horror film. When you person. make a good one, it's <laughs> all, it's like, look, it's like any genre. You're mm-hmm. like, I could be like, oh, I love action movies. Somebody be like, those are mostly terrible. I'm like, you know what? That's actually the case for every yeah. genre. Oh, absolutely. And then it's like, but when you find a good one, you're like, mm-hmm. oh, this transcends. Yeah, you know? it's absolutely. And like, yeah. I'm, I wouldn't consider myself, like there's people who have seen every straight to DVD like uh, Jeepers Creepers film. Yeah. I'm not not on that level. No. I saw the first one. That was Yeah, fun. right. <laughs> That's all you need to see. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I tapped out. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to this festival. And thank you. I, I'm truly honored. I appreciate oh. it. Well, cheers to that. Yeah, I'll drink to that, too. Yeah. Uh, what do you say? We'll wrap this up. We'll see mm-hmm. everybody at the Plaza Theater on March 9th. And then in the meantime, you and I will just uh, drink some wine. Let's do it. Let's cheers, finish it off this bottle. <laughs> Johnny, thank you so much for coming on and joining me. I appreciate it. Always happy to give you a little time here on the show. Always nice. And especially, you know, more guests should bring me wine. Um, and more importantly, I'm truly honored for uh, the award that you're giving me. That's so cool. I mean, look, I've, I've been at this a long time, but it's just nice to feel a little recognition and a little appreciation from time to time. Uh, and, you know, I am an ardent supporter of not just, not just film, but like film, music, art, everything locally, you know, right? And I love... There's just so many opportunities to see so many cool things out there. And um, I don't know. I was just really honored to see it. So uh, I'm looking forward to the ninth at the plaza. That should be really cool. And uh, yeah, that's man, I've just, you filled my heart. I really appreciate that. All right, coming up next. So this is one that's been coming for a little while. We tried to figure it out. I got really excited to have John on the show. Hint's been really great to me. And we have a bunch of upcoming giveaways with Hint. Uh, there's one really big one. I'm just trying to figure out. It's so big. I don't want to tell you, like, because it is like 
the value, estimated value from my casual Googling is like a few thousand dollars. Uh, and I really want to make sure I do it right uh, because it's such a cool thing. Someone's going to love it. And with spring coming up, I think you'll get a lot more action and use out of this. So that should be really cool. As well as obviously like product giveaways and things like that. And I want to put some of these in your hands too. And I think John would as well. Uh, now I, I'm mentioning this here because I don't know. Well, I, I talked to you about the, the replacement cable on the show. So, you know, it's funny. One of the frustrating things about technology is that you can sit here and leave these headphones on. You can test your audio levels. I have a pretty staunch ritual whenever I'm doing a show, right? I'm like, put on the headphones. I'm going like, okay, does everything sound good? Does everything sound right? You'll catch me sometimes at the show if you're watching along. You'll see me watching and adjusting levels, trying to double check things. I don't generally leave headphones on for both of us because for the most part, we're just trying to hear each other. Um, uh, but because of that, sometimes, well, honestly, in this case, it didn't even matter. I listened, it all sounded great. I recorded it. And then it was like my microphone got a cold. So first off, John sounds amazing. So great news there. <laughs> it definitely gets it. And I think you can still mostly make me out. It's that frustrating thing where it just sounds like I'm in the room. Like the, like I said, it sounds like the microphone has a cold. So if you have any questions about things I said in there, I think you'll be fine. It doesn't, my audio personally doesn't sound good, but John sounds great. I think you'll be fine getting through this, but I had a really great time talking about it. And you know, more importantly, I would love to have him back on the show. So if you're watching this, I know you are. Let's redo this again. Let's do the hint shower we keep promising. Maybe not together, but uh, <laughs> it was great. I had so much fun doing this interview. It's always nice when you get to meet someone like this who is just relaxed and comfortable, and especially when you're representing a brand, right? Because I think what happens a lot of time for certain guests, and I've seen this before, is that there's probably a level of anxiety, stress, fear, all these things that come together in these moments to be like, am I representing my company well? Am I going to say something that I personally feel or think, you know, even if it's just a joke or something, you know, a quip offhand, could this be potentially damaging to the future, right? And uh, it's really nice when you get somebody who is just so comfortable in their own skin. And just, I don't know. I just had a great time. Seriously. It was like one of, it was, honest, I, I know I say this pretty frequently these days because I've had a lot of really great guests recently, but this was one that sticks out to me in the last few months that really stood out as just a great guest, great fun. So you can imagine the level of guilt, shame, and other negative emotions I'm feeling about just I'm more than anything embarrassment, but you can't do anything, right? Like I, I've been using this board for two and a half years straight every day, all day. So yeah, of course, occasionally little technical flaws are going to happen. And thankfully, uh, you know, those of us here are just skilled enough to try to make it sound a little bit better. So again, my wholehearted apologies to everybody. And of course, this just means more hint water episodes in the future. So in the meantime, though, let's jump into a conversation in progress, uh, all about hint water and way more. And I'll see you on the other side. You know, I was, I had a guy at my at my house fixing my dryer last week Russian guy he, three year, three and a half years he's been here in the country and I said would you would you like a water yeah and he says uh, in his like Russian accent but he spoke pretty good English for a guy being here for three and a half years yeah and he says to me he says uh, nah he goes uh, he goes it's watermelon he says he says uh, nah he goes all those all those drinks that are flavored he goes they don't. They never taste like what the fruit is. I go. Wait a second, pal. You haven't tried Hint Water. Exactly. And he literally opened it up, cracked it. He goes, "How about that?" And it was watermelon. And he was like, "Yeah," because normally, if you put, if you look at a watermelon, you're, you're, it's like a Jolly Rancher's put in there, right? And you swish it around, and then taste it. It has that like artificial taste. Yeah. Our founders came up with this and just. Ran with. I mean, they 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 perfected the recipe and the essence and the molecules and the fruit itself. So that's amazing. Well, yeah. should we just jump right in? Then? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, well, well honestly, <laughs> I love it. And listen, I'm here for an anecdote to start off. Did Did he finish the work on your house though? I mean, that was, well, that was a part. Of here, well, here, well, least, that, that's a great story. So <laughs> I want to hear it. So so he so something. Uh, the dryer I have is like a very expensive dryer, an ex Alexa Luck. My brother sells dryers. Oh, okay. So I go okay. You know, it's four years old, and he's like, oh, it's going to cost like 300 bucks. Well, I spent like 1000 on it. So, okay, I'll fix it. So it, you dry, pull the dryer vent out, and, and like a stick or something fell down, broke a plastic piece. So he, he came back to fix it. I have a stand underneath my dryer, right? And I had to pull the stand out so he could come fix it. So he fixed the dryer. He comes back. To, How about the guy text me? But he doesn't put the stand back under the dryer. So I, me and my son got to lift the whole dryer up to put the stand in. Yeah. But then 
But then the guy texts me like two days later. He goes, hey, could you give me a good review? I go, I would have if you would have put the stand back. <laughs> you're like, oh, sorry, pal. So, uh, you know, Four it, it all worked out. <laughs> he's getting three and a half, three but he's definitely not getting five. But I just I just thought, like, how about this guy? You know? Yeah, like, I, he, 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 I do love that we live in that world, though, of like, you're like can you give me a review? Yeah. And I'm like, you know the quality of work you did for me. Are you sure you want me to do that? And, and, you know? and it was funny because, he, you know, I was asking him, I'm one of those, I'm, I try not to be, but I'm one of those guys that, like, looks over the guy's shoulder the sure. entire time because I'm like, well, do you need something? Like, he needed to borrow a wrench, so I, I gave him the wrench. Yeah. But um, th- this guy, he, he, he right. I was asking him his story, and he was like, you know, I've been here three years. Me and my brother opened up our own appliance business. He goes, you know, America is like, he's like, America is the place to, like, you should own your own business. He goes, I come from Russia. He goes, you can't own your own business there. He goes, first thing we did, we started our own business. How can we start working? We work hard enough, and that's how it works. I kind of love hearing that. Yeah. 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 Impressive. Uh, Speaking of impressive, i got to lean to this. I haven't tried the watermelon flavor yet. This is really, really good. I mean, they're all written. Everything I've tried so far, I've had mostly the grape and the pineapple before. Um, The watermelon. I mean, they're all super accurate. And almost to the point of, I mean, tying back to your story, I feel like, Kind of, uh, what kind of magic are you guys up to over here, John? Can you give me a hint? I mean, we use the fruit and the essence and the molecules itself, and and we use you know we use a little bit of this and a little bit of that to make it taste exactly like the fruit itself. Yeah, it's yeah uncanny, honestly. You know, I think you made such a great point of describing the typical watermelon beverage that was like you know like you said just like in the dyes and all the other fake flavors. We were like, yeah, sure, this is quote watermelon, but it's not like. I get like the taste a little. I get the taste of not just the fruit. I almost get like, a little hint of the rind. Yeah, I think that's like a weird thing that not weird in a bad way, but like in a unique way of making it taste even more real to me. You know. Yeah. So I'm. I, I you know I did. I listened to a lot of your, your episodes prior to this, and I did not notice that like you were like, "Hey, I'm a water drinker," and that's awesome because yeah. that's what. What our goal is at Hint is to make people fall in love with water again. Yeah. Whether it's Hint water or whether it's regular water, because you know, the American diet's consuming of soda pop, sure, um, artificial sweeteners, uh, energy drinks, you know, you name it. You know, sure. and most of them isn't very good for us. Yeah. Um, some are, some aren't, but you know, for for you can't beat just water. And for a guy like you who loves water. Yeah. You might get bored with it sometimes too, yeah. and I and I've heard that you you have some special you, you drink mate and everything else like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. that. Mix it up a little bit. Yeah, so you you know you do a good job thanks, you know John. of doing this. I, you know, also thanks for watching the show. I really well, appreciate that. I mean, that. Li- I mean, listen, you know, I, I when I, when I'm going to talk to somebody, I want to know what they're going to ask me. Yeah, and I want to have an answer for you. Sure. Because I think you know it, it's it's important. Like this is your job. This is what you do. Right. You're judged upon this, so I don't want to come in here and give you a bunch of one-word answers. That would just enter into a, you know, a shitty. Yeah, that's. Ne- you know, that's and I don't want to have. A, yeah, and, and yeah. I don't want to have a. Sh- yeah, I mean. You know, I, I, next time though, we, we I will plan all one-word answers. Just yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That that would be a that would that would be a good like bit. Yeah. For like you know, uh, for for like Saturday Night Live or like uh, you yeah. know, one of those one we'll of those put on one of like short flat. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like TikTok's yeah. gonna eat it up. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. But you want to go viral? Um, I mean, everyone, every one of every beverage brand's trying to go viral now on TikTok yeah. or or whatever, like Prime or or one of oh, those yeah. guys. But you know, I think I think that one one I call on accounts throughout the entire East. Mm-hmm. So accounts like Wegmans. Oh yeah, and, I love Wegmans. Yeah, and and Giant Eagle and and stuff like that. And when I talk to these folks, and the buyer at Wegmans is a guy by the name of Mike Retta, very nice guy, yeah, awesome to work with, and he, you know, he he's like, you know, I, I really hate these brands that come in and just skyrocket to the top. Yeah, he goes because they, they run out of product, they yeah. let the customer down, and that's what Prime kind of is doing now. Yeah, they kind of just let the customer down. Whereas with Hint, you know, our fill rate is ninety nine point. Eight mm-hmm. percent. So we get to the customer when they need it and when they want it. Yeah. We, we don't have any production issues. I mean, we, we are fully in stock, and we're a two hundred, almost three hundred million dollar brand. That's amazing. So yeah, starting when I started there, we were, I think we did like twenty eight million, and that's ten years ago. Yeah. So we're like the longest overnight success. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> but what's that old expression? It's uh, you know, 
takes a lifetime to become an overnight star. Exactly. I uh, I love that so much, and it is a brand that I've seen for such a long time, and I'm kind of embarrassed that it took me. So, it, I honestly didn't get to try until I came to Double Gems. You, well, know? You, you know, I hear that a lot. I hear that. Um, I hear our brand awareness back in the day, how they measured it was low. Um, I think it was when I first came to Hinn, I think it was like a nine. Okay. And now our brand awareness is in is like a 67, 68. Awesome. So it's grown tremendously. Um, we have a big direct-to-consumer business, too, okay. where, where people order from our online. They subscribe, and they get it monthly. Oh, cool. Every trade show I go to, and I go to a lot during the year, <laughs> every person comes up to me and goes, hey, you know, uh, my wife, this stuff just set, ends up at my house. It's, it's at my doorstep. And we're one of the only real beverage companies that actually do that. We're, we're multi-channel. We, we, we are one of the only once because it's, it's heavy and it's hard to ship sure. so most beverage companies use a distributor or they go to the stores or do that but right. we, we have like a you know a three-tier process we have food service we have retail and then we have our direct to consumer business as well so, that's so cool i didn't yeah. I, I don't think i realized about the dtc side yeah I mean, it seems like a great idea i feel like more brands should just lean into that a little bit well right? I mean, like, it, it's gotta be shipping is the good. big issue sure um you know because it's it's heavy the rates to ship the product to your house is more but, but yeah. I feel like there's a it's hard to put a price I mean these days you could put a price on everything but like I feel like it's hard to put a price on not leaving the house if I don't want to get what I want true you yeah know? I mean we're the number we're the number one flavored water on Amazon yeah. right now too and and you know Jungle Gyms has a much better price than, than Amazon does sure, right I now do. yeah I mean, sorry Bezos uh, uh, yeah I mean uh, he can afford it though that's the that's the idea <laughs> yeah, <it's amazing>. but uh, <laughs> but I mean because they have an extra they have they have a a factor that you know built in with they have to ship it to your door so right. it costs them more to get it to there here we, you guys you know we we started buying when lou came and mm -hmm. lou i met from valley produce in, in chicago, oh, chicago yeah yeah so lou lou and i i've known lou I, i've got to say at least five six years now oh wow, i didn't realize his friendships lasted that yeah, long. yeah 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 well <laughs> we don't talk that often that's how <laughs> that's it helps adventure. yeah yeah so me and lou, i'm gonna use that in all yeah, my relationships exactly yeah just just every <laughs> Every six months or so with Lou, but uh, yeah. So Lou, Lou worked for Valley. We we sold him direct at, at Valley yeah. because he, he wanted to get a better price to give to to, to you know reward his customers. Yeah, and that's what he's doing now at Jungle Gyms. He's rewarding his customers with the best price out there. So it's kind of it's been really very impressive. And you know, I mean, I've only been here a couple of years, but just to watch him work in the few months that I've gotten to work with him. It's been great. It's been great for me too because I'm buying a lot of these products. Yeah, well. you know, and I was like, I'm also the customer, so I'm happy about it. What, what's your What's your favorite What's your favorite item in the store that you that you go to and go uh, when I want to have a treat? What is the I, What is the one thing that I, I see? I know you like ribs. Yeah, you know, yeah I, know I know like meat. Yeah. I like a deal. That's really. Uh, good. Uh, I think that's what you'll learn about me. Yeah. I was like, but those ribs are half off. But I was like, yeah. oh, we're eating ribs this week. Okay, my go to. Oh, all right. I'll answer on the beverage side since that's one. Mm -hmm. So there is a product that Coca Cola makes in Germany called Mezzo Mix. Okay, and it's Coca Cola with fresh orange in it. Yeah, and that's one of those. It's I think, I never would have thought that was it, good. It's one of my favorite. I'll have to try. You know, I it's seriously one of my favorite drinks. I joke all the time that if that stopped being carried here, I would rethink. <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, I uh, you know, uh, as an American, I do love my soda, sure. uh, and which is why I've tried to make such a concerted effort to dive into the water end of things, just to be like, yeah, you can have some soda, but you should probably actually just drink water. Right? Exactly, it's, it's a treat. treat. Yeah, and Mezzo mix up. That's the one. That's a, that's my usual go to. But I have a very long list. I'm. You know, I see memes online all about like, oh, don't uh, ignore me and my emotional support beverages, because yeah. I'm definitely the guy that's like right now on my desk. I've got. A fresh cup of coffee I made this morning. Mm -hmm. I've got another bottle of water. I'm mm -hmm. just regular water. And then I have whatever I'm else prepared for. I'm saying, I'm going to have a soda. I'm going to have some food today. Yeah, you know? Perfect. All right, so you're going to be, you're I'm gonna be running through my water. You're going to be running to the bathroom. Uh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> this is 40. <laughs> you know, I, I joked when I got here, too. I was like, is there any chance I can have a bathroom that was less than a quarter of a mile walk? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's far. You need one built into this, this little studio. You kept joking when I first opened it. I was like, can I get a water line in the corner? Just give me like a drain in the closet yeah, here. My, my brother has a uh, so he has a, a souped up garage. Yeah, like it's like it's like a, a Mac Daddy of all Mac Daddy garages, and he put a urinal in his in his garage. That's he, a dream come he, true. He's like I got a he's got a urinal, and he goes and he, I don't tell people I have another bathroom in there. 
you don't want people no. going in there. No, it's but, like your little private yeah, space. He, this is jungle. Yeah. You're watching this episode. <laughs> he, you should just put a urinal right <laughs> yeah, back I'm there. Right in the corner. Uh, I'll move the gong, yeah. and that's where it'll yeah. go. Okay, uh, so this is my first time trying the cherry. Yeah. This also is amazing. Great, right? Yeah, and it really, again, I hate to sound like such an insane person, because I love the way that it's worded to it. It's water infused with cherry essence. But, I mean, it really... Every time I take a sip, I'm having that thought of like, oh, that's like a real, you know, again, you think that really bright red maraschino cherry. Like, oh, you're thinking, yeah, no, you're thinking you're like, going to get a, a a cherry jolly rancher, like with a, like yeah. a little, like a little, little bit of a, maybe an aspartame kind of taste to yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. No, and, this is and, like, and, I picked it off a tree. It's refreshing. I'm so and it's, baffled. it's like, it's like putting the cherry in there and, and just going yeah, like this. Know. And, and, and our founder, you know, that's what she did originally when she started, she was putting fruit in a in, in like a just a container yeah pushing it up and the kids in the neighborhood loved it yeah and then people were like well, hey where'd you buy that water my kids uh were, were looking for it no kidding and uh yeah and, and that's and that's how it started i, I was gonna ask you about the whole inception of the brand that's yeah. that's honestly kind of amazing yeah no i mean it, it it's truly one of those stories where and and really the the, the brands like that are the ones that actually succeed in in beverage and in consumer packaged goods period yeah Mark. i mean they don't it, it isn't like a conglomerate like mondelez or 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 one of those or Kraft heinz or one of them they're, they're not coming up with something that's going to be life-changing right. they buy that life-changing one and take it to a third or fourth level right like you know i'd that's like to know true, i'd like to know the guy who like who, who invented oreos yeah like where he come from or have you ever heard the story about the, the chocolate taco guy that no. he, he actually worked for a, a big company, Jack and Jill Ice Cream. Okay. He came up with Choco Tacos and never made any money out of it. Okay. Because he worked for them. It was intellectual property. They did it, oh. and then they discontinued the Choco Tacos. But Choco Tacos, man, everybody loved the Choco Tacos. I did tacos, love right? John. But look at me. Right? I've had a few Choco Tacos in my day, John. <laughs> hey, right here, too. It's like a know? third of my body. <laughs> Choco Tacos. Wow. Oh, that's such a bummer, too. Was, that's always a sad story, though, where you're like, oh, I invented this great product that yeah. was, everybody loved and yep. they're like man i made nothing off of it. yeah it's 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 amazing how many people come up with ideas to better things and you know my my dad my dad invented something and it never got off the ground and it's just so it sounds like a, such a simple no-brainer mm -hmm. so if you if you would picture your door here okay right? and my dad invented to put the fire um exit signs mm -hmm in the door jams themselves on the bottom. You know, if you always look up, you see the exit sign on the top. Right. Well, guess what? What are the first thing they tell you to do in a fire? Yeah. Get, get down on the ground. ground. Yeah. So my dad's like, well, you know, I, I, he put these battery powered things that go right into the cell. Yeah. And, you know, the thing was, is like it, the government and, the, and, and just like the codes and stuff, he could just never get a change. The people were like, I'm not spending X amount of dollars to have that done when I can spend... 10 bucks and put the exit sign up there and that right. meets code. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it was like an invention it was like a no brainer and, and he patented it and everything like that and just never, never got it off the ground. That's great. Yeah. It's a bummer too. Now that I'm like, here, I'm like, yeah, that's such a great, Makes sense, that's right? such a no brainer idea that why, almost to the point of why aren't we building it that way? And now I'm, I'm looking at the exit signs over the doors out here. All like, over the doors. Okay. Yeah. They, they've got the spotlights on the side, yep. which aren't no. useless. No. But imagine if they were at the ground. Exactly. Because you're, you know? you're supposed to be, they, 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 first thing yeah, to do is like get low. Shoot light through the clouds of smoke. Oh, man. Listen, yeah. I, I support this. I'm sorry. Well, I know. More of us have to, have to. but the patent's done now. It's over 20 years. You only get it for 20 years. Oh, if you don't really sell it in 20 years, then everybody gets it. Gets it? So smart. now somebody, now a big window or door manufacturer is going to. <laughs> that's all I'm doing. You know, with the uh, what's it called, the copywriting expiring yeah. on the uh, first Mickey Mouse cartoon this week. Yeah, uh, is yeah, it? Or I guess it was January first. Wow. Steamboat Willie went to the public Steamboat domain. Steamboat so How about that? Anybody can use it. I guess I know there's a lot of like you don't have to you know, pay for it. Forth. You don't have to. I think it has to be specifically that version of Mickey, so you can't have mm. to like gloves on. Sure. All that stuff, black and white. So I'm sure. I can't wait to that. see the memes to come out. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh my gosh! I heard you say the meme that would definitely get me in trouble. Uh, there was one I saw yesterday. Somebody fed me a, a, a trailer for a Steamboat Willie horror. Oh, movie get out! That oh, that's, I mean, that's awesome. And I mean, it looks super low budget. It's like somebody had twenty bucks and a, co and a mouse costume. But I guess maybe I should just you should, you should bring that yeah, yeah the cicada costume yeah. and put it up there, and then you could be. It's amazing what they can do now. With the with these with the like yeah, yesterday I was looking I was 
and I'm a, I'm a real guy, so I'm, I'm yeah. rolling through my reels. Sure. And th- there was like Gladiator 2, and I'm like, holy shit, Gladiator exactly. 2. Yeah. I, I'm like, I'm looking through, I'm like, this ain't Gladiator 2. <laughs> These are comes from 10 other movies. Yeah, it's like 10 other movies. I, that drives, that's like one of those oh, things on the internet. I was so excited. Like, yeah, I know. I, was, I have so many friends that'll be like, dude, look what's coming out. Yeah. And I'm like, that's like, no, it's not. I'm like, okay, well, not to be this guy, but it's a clip from this movie. Yeah, this yeah. Movie. It was like... It's uh, great. Well done. Now you don't know what well, actually is going to come out or what's not. Yeah. I was, I was hoping that there was going to be like this Office reboot, but then it's like, well, they're going to have this person. That, I'm like, yeah. No, it's, it's not going to be the same. I do think there's a Gladiator sequel is being there? made, though. I think that might be... Re- uh, I think the... One the concept the, is real, but I wonder. I wonder how it's going to work. Russell one of the Crow's greatest, not quite in uh, no. in, in the same shape. No, I met him. I met him in in New York one time. I I used to uh, own a cheese spread company. I used to make cheese spreads. Oh, cool! And uh, I used to sell to all the Whole Foods in um in the Mid Atlantic and the Northeast regions of Whole Foods. I made them. I sold them. I demoed them. I was doing a demo in Whole Foods in Tribeca, and he came walking in when he was dating. Um, Christy, or not Christy Brinkley. Yeah, Christy Brinkley's daughter, Billy yeah. Joel's daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was dating her at the time, and, and they came walking in. Super nice guy. Yeah. He said hello to me, you know, tried my cheese and everything else like that, and he was buying meat. He's a big meat eater. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I can tell, now I can tell, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but he died at the end. I mean, well, they, they can't bring him yeah, back just, anyway. I so. remember reading that the script was, like, set in whatever the Is it a Gladiator, like, no, it was like a weird Valhalla oh. kind of a situation. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, it wasn't one I was super I excited about. I don't know about that. There's that weird thing these days where they're like, you have a sequel to everything. Like, yeah, but know, I mean, I that one there, ends. that one there, yeah. man, it was, I mean, if, if there wasn't a more perfect movie. Yeah. Right? That movie, every time it's on, I watch it. Oh, yeah, it hits on so many levels. Russell Crowe had a really good run yeah, there. He did have time. a great run. What was the one, did you ever see the one? I'm sorry, now we're totally yeah. Uh, what was the one where he was on? Is it called Master and Commander? Where he's like the boat captain? Yes. That was. Crazy. I've seen that. was one that I've like, seen the whole underrated. thing. But oh, I, what I've seen, I will. But I, I've seen some parts of it. And I think I, I watch a lot of movies. Yeah. But I always fall asleep during them. Same. Because I watch in the, like in bed at yep. night and I'm. I'll go sleep, then I'll go read back and rewatch it again. <laughs> the best part is when you forget like a movie from like 2012 or 2011, and you're like, huh, I haven't seen this one. And then yeah. it's it, it's there. Oh yeah, and then you're like, oh wait, I never, I, I did see this yeah, movie, I mean, but I don't remember what happens at the end anyway. So it's all good. I can yeah. rewatch it again. Yeah, that's one of those nice things about the world of streaming. You know, we were joking about some of the stuff, and I was about to go in like, you know, with us being able to not necessarily easily discern when like things are. I wouldn't go real, but you know, for the yeah. sake of this, yeah, real. So I keep thinking, like, with all the AI stuff too, how many things I want to know. You know, look, I shouldn't say this because it would ruin my career a little bit in regards to, like, yeah, let's do a little more AI. But I would watch an AI sequel or something. I well, think. It might be terrible right now, but well, I mean, you're I mean, look, uh, I mean... We're, we're going to get to see uh, Biggie and Tupac again, right? At right, some exactly. point, right? I'm not mad about it. Yeah, right. like, when they started doing the holograms, yeah. everybody was like, I don't know about this. I'm like, well, why here's not? what I know. Yeah. I know that I've never gotten to see them live. Correct. You know, I was 12 years old when yep. they got shot, so I was like, wasn't really hanging out a lot of rap yep. shows, yep. you know? But now, I love to. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It was, it's, it was a, uh, that was a, that was a great time in music. It really was. It was a great time, because grunge was coming out. Oh, yeah. The 90s were just The great 90s decade. was just, yeah. it was just, I mean... I, I grew up I grew up in a town about ten miles or so, less than ten miles outside of Philadelphia. So in between New York and Philly. Okay. It's a town called Croydon, Pennsylvania. And uh, the the tagline is Croydon, the town where people care. And we still don't know what they care about. We do we know they care about drugs, alcohol yeah. and, and, and bar fighting. But the, we're not sure exactly what they care about. That was the tagline. And somebody stole the sign. They did a big sign. They took it and they put it in their in their basement because that's, that's what the people are. But it is the it is the most interesting town in America with the the characters that you. If I told you, you would not believe that these people actually exist. I mean, we have folks there that are just unique, and they're they're nowhere else in the world. And oh, yeah. it, it's it's just. One day I keep telling everybody that I want to I want to do a like TV show and and the TV show would be a, every week it's about the different characters that grew, I grew up in that town like it, it was on the, this guy like one guy Radio Joe he walked around all day with a radio cutting people's grass and he just sit, called everybody Ray he just Ray yeah. hey Ray hey Ray hey, hey Ray and no one's name was Ray 
But well, my brother's name was Ray, but everyone else, no one else's name was Ray, but he called everybody Ray. Well, uh, yeah. I broke a glass Ray twice a day. I and, I mean, he, he just called everybody Ray with Tony the Head. Tony the Head had this, like, odd-shaped head. He was, like, deformed. And we called him, like, everybody said he's an alien. And, yeah. and people would come from out of town, and he was, he, he was like a bartender at the local bar, and they, yeah. and they would go, I see this really weird guy. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, he's an alien. And yeah. I'm like, what? Oh, oh my God, have we seen him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We're, we're believing it. It was like, oh, yeah, we've released uh, a few documents. That, that might be that, back in that he office. Might have been, he, he, he might have been a closet guy that they just passed off, Tony the Head. But, I mean, they just. I watch that oh, this, I'm telling you, this show. And it's funny because um, I, I, I actually have a friend who I went to high school with who runs MTV, who yeah, I'm like, right. like do, I, do I call him? Do I tell him? You're like this is a good reality show. Yeah, like, like, like I was just like, I like, I, I, I like, his name's Mike McCarthy. He's the he's the he's the president of MTV, and I'm like, I don't know, should I do this or should I not? And and he hasn't responded back. To me. That's okay. You yeah, don't have time. No, I was gonna say I'm sure he's getting into David the pitch, but at the same time, this sounds like I feel like that's a show you could do that in a lot of probably cool small towns like that, that where you're like, there are these they got characters, people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you also have to write for it. You just have to put them in situations. And 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 you set it in the in the late eighties, early nineties of like craziness. Yeah. Because I got it was a crazy time. Like I, I people pe- I, people don't realize we grew up in the best time in yeah. America in the in the late eighties, early nineties. I my only my only time I ever regret being younger is when I'm like I wish I was a little older to appreciate those times more. Right. Because I was a kid. It was still yeah. great. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I mean, I think about everything, you know. Well, I'm constantly getting fed now nostalgia on YouTube. Yes. Like, oh, hey, here's how bad it is, Mark. Here's a video of three hours of 1990s TV commercials. And I'm going to watch them all. All of them. All of them. Oh, and that it's Pepsi a- commercial. Yeah. Right? Oh, With the gosh. Harry Jet. Did you watch oh, that documentary? Gosh. Was that great or it what? It was so good. I forgot all about yeah, it. Yeah, me too. And when, as soon as, but as soon as I saw the clip, I was like, oh, I remember this ad. And I yeah. had no idea there was controversy about it. I- I knew there was some controversy, but I don't know what to that extreme, yeah. obviously. And then the Cindy Crawford thing with the, uh, that was just. <laughs> I remember those ads. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those are weirdly yeah. 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. But, but when, she, when she went with that one, that white one piece, when she went up in the, in the, <laughs> in like the Texas desert. <laughs> that, that That's thing. the one in particular that sticks in my brain forever. I remember, I think that was a Super Bowl ad. Yeah. Bowl, yeah. Right? It, it definitely had to be a Super Bowl I, ad. I think about this thing every so often. Let's, okay, so let me to tie it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. One of the things I like about these brands, like Candy and yourself, obviously, is that there's genuinely a little sense of that you care about us as your as your consumer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you're I do. Get, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you definitely. Yeah. do. and I feel the brand pretty positively, right? I yep. mean, it's like obviously, I mean, we get this independent vibe. We're using real product, real fruit, all that stuff to make this happen. That you care, and it's something that I think. I'm happy to be here because it's kind of restoring some of my faith in humanity in that what I like about watching those old commercials is that I was like, oh, there's like this little bit of effort or something where I genuinely believed at the time that, yes, this is still means to get me to buy your sure. product, but you did it in such a kind way that I actually feel on board for being a consumer. I, 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 think, I think they need, uh, not they, I think marketing folks could get back to a little bit of the less minimalist yeah. a- attitude. Like everything's like minimalized oh right now, God, right? Like an way these yeah, and it's crazy. like, you know, we were flashy. Like we were yeah. cocky. We were king of the hill. We were in the in the in the 90s. It was like, you know, you said crazy stuff and you know Yeah, it was it, uh, people were trying yeah. to lean into being unique, I think, was a big thing. Especially Correct. in the nineties. When yeah. you look back at and it's funny now to see people starting to embrace some of those aesthetics. I mean, Ric Flair is one of the most popular guys right now, right? Yeah, and, right. And, I mean, you, you could, I mean. That's a great point. I mean, and who thought we'd be here in 2024 still hitting the woo, na- you know? Na- I mean, not me. Yeah, not, definitely not I mean, me. Not me, but he, I mean, those guys, I mean, those guys, him, Hulk Hogan, I mean, they. T- I just seen the movie Iron Claw. Yeah, oh, I heard it was amazing. <sighs> I, I mean, it. If you think you're going to see a wrestling movie, you're really not. Um, okay, that, it was, that's a selling point. It was super me. depressing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, me, yeah. I, I miss the comedies. Sure. 
Sure. Like I miss the I miss the tropical thunders. I miss the super bads. I miss oh, all yeah. those, and, and we're not going to see them ever again. No, and, and I was thinking about that recently. Where like the last big budget movie I saw was the, it's like the Justin Bieber spoof that uh, Andy Samberg. Oh, hilarious! Saw, it's so funny. Hilarious. hilarious! And nobody saw it. Hilarious! Oh, I've seen it. I know. It's oh, like, hilarious! Oh, oh yeah. We're oh, yeah. yeah. doing a movie podcast. Oh, I, I, hey, I'm listen. Doing. You, I, I, we just, we just bought that the movie uh, game where they they like show clips. Yeah, I, I killed it. Yeah, I, yeah. I I love watching movies just because it's a it's it's an escape where it's like a couple of hours where you that you, you only need to focus on that whether yeah. it's stupid or whatever it is but yeah, yeah I mean I can bust out every movie clip from old school from from, oh, yeah. from Step Brothers from you know a, any one of them ones you want I mean I could do that other guys yeah oh I mean, another good one Angel the Bushes yeah <laughs> <laughs> who would do that who would, he, was, he was thirteen stories up who would who would aim for the bu- Classic movie. My 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 favorite part in that movie is yeah. um, is is free hot dogs for everybody. No drinks. No <laughs> drinks. <laughs> just no um, like, but I mean, Will Ferrell. Yeah. He just he classic. Just, I mean, he's, he's a killer, especially in that era too. You know, you brought up old school. I yeah. remember getting. I got really really lucky. I got to see a very advanced like cut mm-hmm. early cut of the old school before it came out. And I remember going to see it. I couldn't get any of my friends to go with me. What? And it was like this hilarious thing. I was like, you guys don't want to go. It's free. And like, yeah. you need to see this. Like, and they were all kind of like, what if it sucks? I was like, well, it's free and yeah. it's 2002. Yeah. What else? We don't, what yeah. else are you going to yeah, do? Exactly. Download something on yeah. Master? Come yeah, on. Master, you know yeah, what I, I mean? Uh, and I was like, let's go. And so I remember this whole big thing. And so my mom ended up going. Oh, nice. Me. And I thought it was so funny because we lost our mind. I mean, that was like one yeah. of the, especially at the time, I was like, I did not see that coming. I remember just losing. Oh, God, the scene where he gets shot with tranquilizer dart. Oh, I like, it's like one of those things oh. where, like, to this day, I love you, the man. Physical feeling yeah. of of laughing that part of the theater, just be like, I can't believe. That I watch. I got a friend that can do that spot on. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's what that's like the first time Stifler shows up, right? Yeah, like, right. It's like, exactly. uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like, like, you know, you're like, oh, shit, that's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the mullet and everything. Oh, oh man. That's such a good look. Yeah. Oh, but, my but, God. But those movies, those movies, the, the, the comedy ones, when you go to see them at first, you, you, you're you trying to follow the plot. Right. So you, you, you're, you're like, okay, you're following the plot, you're following the plot, so you're not really getting the jokes. Right. It's not until you see it either twice or the third time yeah. where you already know the plot, and now you're really paying attention to, like, what Will Farrell's sub he's, he's trying to throw in there. Oh, yeah, and, like, little mannerisms and little funny things like that. Oh I mean, gosh. like like um, in Daddy's Home, too, where they with the, with the thermostat. I haven't seen that. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, good it's, well, so, so he goes... So his, his, the, the, uh, Mark Wahlberg's daughter... Has a thermostat up to like eighty five. Yeah. At, at the house, they're all staying and they're all sweating. They come out and they go, "Who's changing the thermostat?" And 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 the little girl comes out of the room. She's like, "I like to sleep with my window open." She goes, hey. "They all turn and walk over." They go, "You've lost control. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well give her the keys to the car right now. <laughs> 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 give her the bank account yeah. right now." Oh my god! Oh, so oh, you got to check that check movie out. out. It's yeah. a good. It, it, it's surprisingly good. There's that thing where, like, again, you know, all the big budget comedies kind of went away. Yeah. I think, you know, I have to assume Netflix, not Netflix specifically, but just the idea of all the streaming services, I think have killed people going to the theaters for some of the big stuff. Yeah. Like, all right, so make a little so why don't comedy. they, why don't they go mm-hmm. ahead and make one? I mean, it, w- it would be huge for them. I have, I have a friend, um, girl who's my daughter's godmother. She's the, She's a VP of marketing at, at Netflix. I'm gonna mention that to her. She's a. Uh, yeah, she I love. To, she, I gotta. I gotta tell her. Like, listen. My, here's the thing. I think there's very look. I have this specific conversation. Yeah. A couple times yeah. a week. Yeah. And I think a lot of us are really craving that kind of content out there too. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan says it three times a week on his yeah. podcast. He's like, you know, you don't see these these comedies that like. He was just like Tropical Thunder is like the. <laughs> It's like the greatest comedy of all time, and like it's so you can't, you can't. I'm always play surprised it. that it, I'm surprised there hasn't been backlash for it still since it is kind of real. It's like 2008 ish. Yeah, like, I'm surprised there's been a little more backlash in the modern society. Yeah, I mean, um, I, th- I think if you, if if they try to like reboot it, then it, 
<laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, watch, when they hit, like, in 2028, there'll be, like, a 20th anniversary screening. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, but that one, I mean, he, that one is just that. There's so many, everybody in that movie is so oh. good. Oh, Tom Cruise. Oh, uh, Tom Cruise Tom was Tom Cruise, a guy was, I didn't like, and, and oh. he did that, and I was like, just uh, you, you, you know how many people didn't like Tom Cruise until that part, until that movie? I would assume a lot of oh. us. He's so weird. He's still kind of so weird. He, he does he does seem weird. he does seem a little bit weird. Yeah. I mean, that's a Scientology thing, I sure. guess. But but like but you know, for the it's like I had I haven't even dove into a lot of his movies where every so often I watch something where I'm like, Oh, I like this maybe in spite of you being in it. And then then once I was like, Oh, you're willing to really kind of make fun of yourself here. Because Ben Stiller's pretty much playing Tom Cruise in that movie. You know? I mean, like, that's... Well, the, and the trailers and everything leading up to it, and, and all the press they were doing, they were like, hey, we're like brothers. Oh, not really. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. We're like brothers. But uh, my, my wife never seen a Tom Cruise movie. Oh, wow. Ever. Until Tropical oh, Thunder. And then she was, like, hooked. Yeah. And she's like, oh, well... Uh, and, it's like she never seen risky business, all the right moves. Oh yeah, any of the like Mission like, Impossible's, yeah. any of the classic Tom Cruise movies. She didn't. She just. She's like, I don't like them. Skip it. So oh, I didn't. Yeah. So I didn't see him. I'm like, you. You missed out on some really good movies yeah. because, at, at at the end of the day, yeah, he's a weird guy. But, but it's like leave it off. It, it, for the most part, he doesn't bring it to the screen. You know. No, great guy. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't. I, like I don't Mr. know. Impossible movies. Yeah, like, I mean, they just keep getting. They more keep. And more keep you, they keep you entertained. Yeah. It, it was funny. What she. Uh, the, about action movies that she made a comment the one time was like Fast and Furious 3 she says mm-hmm. and she's she's talking to her brother and she says to her brother she goes this is the one that's going to tie it all together and I'm like everyone the new, time a new one comes out I'm like hey is this one going to tie it all together <laughs> she gets so mad at me she gets so mad but, oh, but I mean good. they keep they keep me awake yeah right White House down, like all those, like oh, yeah. kind of, they keep me awake. That are the ones that keep you awake. And those are the ones too that, in hindsight, you know, as the way we watch things change, you know, as far as being able to just stream whatever I want, whatever, it kind of hits a lot of the notes that I miss from going to Blockbuster. In the, in oh the yeah, yeah, I heard that on the podcast. Yeah. You talk about the the candle guy was going to do the Blockbuster sent. How's the I, candles turn out, by the they, way? Honestly, that my house. So I I took the one that we made uh-huh. home, and my house smelled like fruit. <laughs> Fruit, I mean fruit, this in a nice fruit way. Loops. Yeah, for like yeah. a month and a half. Yeah. And I I think I may have mentioned it to Corey when mm-hmm. we were doing it. I was like, I'm not a big Fruit Loops guy. No, it so, smells good. But it, the scent was incredibly Right effective. on there. It worked really well. It was really cool, especially like the first couple burns because yeah. like the colors got all mixed up mm-hmm. and then eventually it was just Where's that kaleidoscope of did he, did he bring you like one of those big ones that he sells? I know. Exactly. Where is he? he didn't have. You don't have one. Corey, anymore. where are you? Where is he? Can, where's Corey? Are we hiding out of the East What's East he doing? Right now? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, Corey he didn't. What store West. wasn't he in? Was he not in this store? He's not in this one. Okay, he's so he's in that one. I think okay. They were talking about bringing it over, but I. Yeah. I know, so I haven't checked back. That's like a hundred dollar candle or something, isn't it? I hope something not. Like that. Something. I, like, I, it was something expensive. He said. The small here's, ones he said were 35. Yeah. Once I edit the show, I've heard it so many times yeah. that it's just like my brain's like, and mm-hmm. empty the recycling bin. One. You know? I hate that. I got too. you. So people will be like, what other shows do you listen to? I was like, no. No, you don't listen to any other podcasts oh, at all? I almost don't because I'm so in the thick of editing stuff here that by the time you I get off time. work. Yeah, and like, I have a decent commute. I have like a 40-minute commute oh, each way. So it's one of those things where like when I get in the car, I'm almost like, I almost don't have music with lyrics anymore because I'm just so, you know, either I'm doing interviews, you know, and I'm obviously here. I want to hear everything you want to say. Sure. And I want to hang on your sure, words. Sure, sure, sure. And then it's like by the time you get back to the end, I'm like, yeah. oh, I watch it. It's like, good. Oh, yeah. it's great. And then, here's, yeah. Here's what we want to do. Here's what you want to do. Yeah, I listen – I listen to Joe Rogan yeah. r- religiously. Um, I walk my dogs every morning. Oh, okay. So I do two miles every morning. And then on the weekends, I do like three, three and a half. We, we, we take a long run. And awesome. And I listen, I listen to that. I listen to Joe Rogan, and I listen, I listen to yours for the last couple of weeks I now that. so Thank that you. I can you know get, get to know you a little bit so we, we come in and we're, we're comfortable together. And then... Uh, the, my favorite part of the show is just uh, waiting. Uh, <laughs> this gentleman was staring very intently. I thought he kept raising his arms at me. I was like, oh, is this how it ends? That's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And, yeah, I had to fly <laughs> in, too, so I can't protect you. <laughs> I joke all the time. That's why I keep the cardboard marked. Sure, right? yeah. One day, he's going to save my life. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it'll be very funny. Yeah, one, one, one guy told me before, it's like uh, we were we were at the zoo. Yeah. Uh, me and a friend of mine were at the zoo, and 
it's a weird thing to have a friend. You go to the friend of the zoo, but he went. I was taking my kids, and he was like, "Can I come with you?" I'm like, "Okay, sure." It's yeah. a little weird. So we're standing there looking at the cheetahs. Yeah. And the cheetah's looking like he wants to eat us. I mean, he literally looks like he wants to eat us. And uh, I go, uh, his name is Buck, Bucko. I used to call him Tom Bucko is his name. I go, Buck, uh, cheetah looks like he wants to eat. He goes, he ain't looking at me, Johnny. He's looking at you. And he goes, I don't got to be, he goes, I don't got to be fast. I only got to be faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> cheetah comes out. It looked like, I, I just, the cheetah looked like he was going to come out and grab us, but. Yeah, well, stay, stay behind the, the panes of glass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Here, the cheetah would have a tough time, but. Yeah, yeah. well, and that's why I brought him in. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good, that, that would be, be a good podcast. podcast. Uh, early on, I tried to, so early on, I tried to get into one of the Bengal tiger things oh, here. Because be I was like, this is a great combo. Yeah. And they were like, we don't know if that's safe. And they're like. And wait, they, wait, so then they come, wait, wait, like, wait, Jungle Jim was the guy who said, <laughs> we can't do this? No, Jungle's on board. Oh, so okay, the zoo. Uh, it was, uh, I forget who was originally the point of contact, but they were reaching out to one of their friends at the zoo. They're like, hey, what's the likelihood we at least get him in there for a photo or two? And they're like, well, this could be dangerous. And I'm like, I'm on board. You're, like, you're in I'll for I'll get it. mauled if I have to. That me. would be classic. Because that would be pretty legend. If I survive, it, oh. I'm a legend. Yeah. You know, yeah, if yeah. I don't survive, yeah. I'm still a legend. Like, yeah. I just won't be here to enjoy it. Like, oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's why I looked at it. I was like, shh. Oh, that I was like, if I could just get it in a problem area already where I'm like, oh, you know, my legs are already haven't worked most of my life. I was like, yeah. why just aim low? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm used I never to thought go. about, I never thought about going up against a, uh, I hope we wouldn't have to. A Bengal tiger. Same time. Tell me. They're, they're big. Different. They are huge. Huge. Yeah, but I'm hoping that I'm just like. They ain't going to be like in Gladiator, man. Where like, That's what I'm not going I'll just get my spear out and get it right in, in the heart. That ain't happening. I would come in like full armor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come, like, come in with God. one of those like medieval. Can you imagine uh, me having? This is uh, the problem. Can you just imagine having a lot of animal in here, though? I mean, I, I mean, I had a duck once. That was about that's as close. awesome. I had, his name was Huck. Huck the duck. Huck the duck. He's from a rescue here in town. He was great. We took him on a store tour. He was really awesome. well behaved. Yeah. So that was fun. Uh, I'll have to find that. I'll send you some clips. And we had we here. had a couple of ducks. Uh, my father in law. Went to a uh, reptile show. Yeah. And he decided they had little baby ducks there that they were feeding to the snakes. And he decided he was going to save a couple of ducks. Yeah. And um, the next thing you know, I got two ducks in my backyard. And he doesn't know how to care for any ducks. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he, he figured his way out. And we, we finally got him sheltered at a, at a place down near the Jersey Shore, which was great. But oh, cool. he, he, uh, those ducks followed him everywhere. I, I mean, it. they just followed him around. Axel and Rose, they called Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Axel and Rose. They, one had I would welcome feet. them to the jungle. Yeah. That, 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 they, I think they would have just hung out. They yeah, didn't, probably. They didn't, um, they didn't bother anybody, but, you know, they probably poop all over the place. Well, yeah, they that's the one trade-off, right? You know, but so do I. Nobody seems to be <laughs> Nobody's doing it. I, uh, <laughs> I told him this, and I'll bring this up again because I'm, like, hoping this is my secret side business. One yeah. day. I think that ducks make a great anti-theft i would say like okay you know you want on property people are like i'm gonna get a bunch of dogs i'm gonna get a bunch of dogs mm-hmm. and like dogs in my opinion you can buy a dog off right even an aggressive one if i throw them the right cut of meat oh yeah i'm safe yeah, yeah. a duck doesn't really Bone. work like that way no you know so you're at least alerted to the danger yeah they're gonna quack all the time all the time see yeah, I, you know, you ever you ever see that one real? Hey, who feels threatened by a duck in a distance? You're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm going to go walk right past the duck, right, but he's exactly. going to alert yeah, you. Yeah, you will, as I'm. <laughs> yeah. Keep on walking. Keep on <laughs> walking. I'm like, I'm fantasizing being John Wick right now, okay? I think I'm back. That would be, that would be cool. Now that's, now, that's a great, that's a great, oh, I mean, come on, right? Yeah, I need to watch the new one. Yeah. Like, yeah. I caught I watched it. I got it in my library. I bought I it. it yeah. I bought it. I bought it. You know, I, I, if if there's something come out like that, I'll buy it just to support because they yeah. know they're not getting the the, the movies, uh, the money from the movie theaters. If if it comes out just like straight to there, or yeah. I don't have time to get to the theaters, or it went into the theater and went out of the theater pretty quickly. But um, but I, I still like going to the movies. Although the movie I went to, when I was seeing the Iron Claw, the seats were like old school, oh. like. You know, you get the new ones that are like the yeah. leather, and you push the button. And you know, yeah, like yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you're going to a cinematic adventure. Right. You know, these ones were like, uh, I was like, this still uh, like uh, awkward. Uh, oh, yeah. it was bad. Yeah. That's so that, then that that didn't make for it. But the movie, like I said, it was it was good. 
I need to check, check it out. out. I've heard a lot of people. Re- and I, so I never really got into wrestling. And so that was, was sort of, I was like, oh, wait until it's video. video. God, it, how old am I now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to hit video. <laughs> That's funny because when I mean, you were mentioning Blockbuster and like the smell oh, and everything yeah. like that, I used to take my kids to Blockbuster. My son was a huge wrestling fan. Like, yeah. From three years old, he's, he's now, he'll be 18 this year. From three years old on that kid, Live, die, breathe wrestling. I would take him the blockbuster, and he would just grab, go and grab every wrestling thing he would do. It just all day long. That's all he would play. Yeah. But we we went the blockbuster, man, all the time because it was just so convenient. Just to pop the DVD, yeah. and, and this kid's playing with wrestling toys the whole entire time. And but yeah, I remember the smell, the candy, the glue, the the oh, whole yeah. thing that you guys were talking about. It's it, it, like locked in. I'm and I'm sort of surprised that no one's really done like. A pop-up version of them yet, you know. Like I well, see some of these like tape swaps, but I'm like, somebody just needs to do it that way. Uh, 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 remember, remember the episode of South Park where he, he was the last guy to buy the box. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes I might be Randy Marsh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh! I just, that's a good... I just dropped ten grand on a blockbuster franchise. <laughs> No one can't. No one shut up. He's in, uh, he's in the little window like this the whole time. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> you know? It's Halloween. You know, nobody really does that. I was going to say, because I think that's the one where they send out what's his name on the iPad. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. Oh, there's another show. Go wrong. Oh. We've derailed so much. Well, Hopefully people learned enough about him. Since well, <laughs> is there any other questions you want to know about I mean, him? realistically, I wanted to dive in, and I, and I know you Go covered this, it. about the inception of the brand. I mean, it, we talked about like the formulation as far as like using the natural fruit in there and everything yeah. like that. I mean, I think most of the product questions I had, you kind of answered without me asking, so thanks for, thanks for nothing. This is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I'm a good listener. No, you're great. No, I really, I joke about this all the time. I and I well, often I'm sure you. It probably came up in one of the episodes where I'm like, oh, they brought notes. They yeah. had notes. Oh, I, I always get super hyped about that. Yeah. But I knew you had notes as soon as you were dropping deep cuts of the show that I didn't even remember. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I said that. Sounds yeah. like something I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's fresh and it was in. You know, it that's was, cool. It was, no, it was, seriously, it was it like, a lot too. I, 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 I'm, I'm, you're welcome. I just think um, when when you're doing something. Like, you know, people will probably be like, oh, yeah, you're doing a podcast at a supermarket. But, like, this place, this is the first time I've ever been here. Yeah. Oh, um, I did not right. I meant to ask something yeah. about Well, I'm, I mean, I'm from, I'm from, you know, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, right? So, oh, okay. Um, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not from around here. I've heard of Jungle Gyms. Yeah. I, I you know, Lou, Lou invited me to come to do the podcast and come down because, you know, like, I feel like we, we, deserve, we owe it to customers to to come visit and see what they do. I see Lou at the shows and I see Bree at the shows. I take them out to dinner and stuff yeah. like that. But you know what? I I you know I to just to visualize this place. It 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 looks like and I don't know if you I don't know much traveling you do, but you did say you know Wegmans. So I grew been, up on the East Coast. So where did you grow up? So I spent a, a very long way about this, but I spent my time between uh, House of the Jersey Shore and Oh, and, get out! Oh, and so then when I was in high school, definitely I definitely know where Bucks County is. Okay. Yeah. So no, I, yeah. as soon as you said Bucks County, yeah, I was like, oh, that's, Bucks yeah, County. I was like yeah. oh, I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So that, uh, you know, I I, I tell everybody um, all the good people come from Bucks County. Right? <laughs> everybody in the beverage business comes from Bucks County. That's so cool. And uh, and and we 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 um, I don't know if you knew this or not, but we uh, way Bucks County goes, the national election goes. So whoever the president's going to win, it's whoever oh. wins Bucks County. Look it up. It's cool. a, it's, a awesome. it's a yeah. it's a fact that we're there. But that's yeah, really cool. yeah, that that that's how it works. Like if Bucks County, if if, if a Democrat they win Bucks County, then the Democrat that's wins. True. If a Republican, a Republican huh. wins De- it, Bucks County. But right. yeah, well, yeah, but we're at New Jersey Shore. Uh, a little town called Spring Lake Heights. I know exactly where that's at. That's awesome. I love yeah. Spring Lake. That's where my friends used to oh, go. My mom's gonna be so. She'll actually listen. To oh, this absolutely. Love, I love Spring <laughs> Lake. Beautiful town. Yeah, it really is. Beautiful town. Oh my gosh, I went back. I'm I only didn't... 40 minutes from there. Oh, okay. Right cool. off, right through 195. From, okay. From you know, right through Trenton and just straight yep. shot right to Spring Lake. I hadn't been back in a long time, and I went probably probably like five minutes, probably longer than that, probably like six, seven years ago now. And I was like, wow. Not really much has changed the last. No, year. they're not going to let it. I love that. Yeah, no, they're not going to let it. I mean, those those homes there are worth a lot of money. Yeah, they're right on the beach. Um, right, you're, you're right down the street from like Deal. Yep. Oh, that's that, now that I mean that's like 
they're hidden gems. People people yeah. think the Jersey Shore, they think like the Jersey Shore show. Right, and I know. They don't realize. I was so mad when it came out. I was like, that's not what it's this like. This is it's definitely this not is what one it's like. Part of it, I and, guess. And and yeah, I mean, they, that's a mind numbing show that you just watch just because you want to like yeah. waste some time. But, right, uh, exactly. No, but I mean, all up and down that Jersey Shore. I mean, for, as far as like hint customers, crush it. I bet. I mean, we kill it. It, uh, all, all up and down that Jersey Shore, any supermarket that's on that Jersey Shore. Yeah. So you probably shopped at the Acme in Spring Lake, or, yeah, or the and the, the yeah, river. and they're yeah. they're they're gone now. Yeah, so they're gone. But you now they're in like in Wall Township. There's a, there's a Whole okay. Foods there now. Yeah. There's an Acme right there, but you know there's the shop rights and everything. That, yeah, that shop right shop, shop right is the one that that's where we'll do a lot of business. And cool. there's there's a specific group called Saker Shop Rights that have they have they have a, a dedicated end cap to us. Full time there at the yeah, Jersey awesome. Shore, but yeah, it's a great place, man. It's a great place. It's, it's one of those things that, like, you know, I would, I don't want to be like, even because I'm still young enough to appreciate both living there and then coming here. Uh, but it is one of those things that, like, I sometimes regret not getting back up there often enough. You know, you should. And now the cost is. Well, well, well what I think, I think, I think you should, I think you should come to Philly. Okay. And I'll take you around a little bit. We'll go. We'll do. We'll we'll I do some eating. That. I'll take you to the good cheesesteak places. You gotta like cheesesteaks, oh, right? Of course. Oh my gosh. We'll take you to the good yeah. cheesesteak. I'll take you to my friend's place that has um, the got rated. He, he got rated kind of low. I thought he was going to be higher on Barstool. You got a seven point seven, but he's a New Hope. You've been to New Hope? No. Oh, you got to go to New Hope. Okay. You'll love New Hope. And great little town. But yeah, uh, Dave Portney was just there at my friend's oh, okay. pizza joint. Yeah, That's he gave awesome. a seven point five, but. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I mean, whatever about Dave, I don't love the one bite review personally. Mm-hmm. Although I kind of, there's part of me that is like, I get it. Yeah. But every so often, I know I've had ones where I was like, no. Yeah. I know uh, that it was better than the school. Yes. Day. You yes. Know what I mean? yes. 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 But, but he's, that thing's, that thing. Who would have thought? Pizza. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. It's one of those, it's one of those ideas that I'm mad I didn't come up with. I think that's where any, any perceived negativity, I'm like, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would like, hey, I could do this. I know what good pizza is. Oh, my gosh. If they you, have good pizza here? We You're from Jersey. for a long time. Yeah. I was very mad about it for a very long time. Where I was like, when I first, I, I'll never get this. When we first yeah. got here, I remember them telling my dad. They were like, oh, you like, you guys from the East Coast? You like pizza? You got to try this place called oh, no. The Roses, which is uh-huh. a local chain. But it's like, it's not for me. I'll put it that way. It's very, the sauces here tend to be way, way sweeter. Oh, really? But we've had a lot of transplants. So recently there's a spot, and I have a couple of th- favorite pizza places here. Like my friends, we have a spot called Fireside Pizza. It's awesome. It's like an old uh, brick oven. Fire. Yeah, yeah. And like old firehouse. Uh, so the vibe is like really cool in there. And he's a great guy. Um, and his pizza is great. And recently just opened a, in my opinion, the first time a Midwest place when they put New York style on there okay. actually tasted like it called Trophy. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I would do aggressively bad things. Really? So, yeah, it's really good. I would say I would say the, the, the true test for um, pizza joints is what kind of cheese do they use? Exactly. Do they use Grande? Oh, that's the question. Yeah. That's the one. That's the cheese. Grande cheese okay. is the one. So when you go into your place, like, hey, the good ones are like, use Grande? Yeah. And they'll be like, well, how, how do you know? What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Or like, oh, yeah. Or like, do they use the grande mix? See, I'm always so focused on the bread part because I feel like one of the things that, like, you know, and I think they debunked this recently, but I don't believe the yeah, science. The still, water. Where they were like, oh, it's the water. Yeah, it's better. And I'm like, ah, that's the bagel thing. It's true, though. Oh, my gosh. Don't even get me started. So the bagels, listen, I'm just going to call out the entire Midwest right now. Yeah. <laughs> What are we doing, guys? I can't be the only, I won't say, but I can't be the only person here that knows good bagel. It's very hard. We had one place Not good in bagels. Northern Kentucky that did okay, but then they like went out of business. So I was like, all right, I give up. People like what they like from the area that they're from. You yeah. know, there's there's things that, that, that are from here that people in New York or Philly or yeah. Bucks County would be like, I'm not. This, yeah, for sure. You got it. And I'm pretty right. open minded. I'll try it all, but it's definitely that thing now where, like, when I think of like a Cincinnati pizza, I just doesn't the word pizza doesn't enter me. No. I, you what know, are they famous for in Cincinnati? Our chili, I think. Chili. But like, I say chili. Here's another thing. Okay, it's a dream plan. I think one of the things that Cincinnati did wrong from a PR standpoint is by aggressively branding their 
chili as chili. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you think chili right now in your head, you and I are conjuring the exact same image and that is not what they're going to serve you there. Oh, really? It's more like, it's like a Greek seasoned, almost like a bolognese, okay? They serve it over spaghetti and this pound of this like bright neon orange fresh cheddar. Oh, really? Okay. I think Almost it's like a vodka rigatoni uh, it's sort like of. way closer okay. to that than it is to chili, in my opinion. And I think one of the weird things that a lot of people, when they're not from here, they go, you hear chili, you're thinking of a thing. Oh, I know what and I'm thinking of. And then you get something else, yeah. and you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And I, I saw it with a lot of my relatives when they come to visit, they're like, this is, this is bullshit. You know, I'm like, no, it's, I think it's really good. They're like, it's not chili, though. I'm like, okay, well, divorce yourself from the, the word, right? Uh, and so now... One of the big brands in town has removed chili from their branding. They simply go by Gold Star. I I, uh, I did a uh, two years ago. I did a um, I was a judge for a chili cook off. Oh, that sounds it fun. It was my friend owns a bar and they do it for a homeless shelter and everything they raise for that they they give to it. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to take this serious. I wrote notes down for all the chili. Yeah. Well, a lot of my friends were once made the chili. Yeah. So one of my friends, I put on there tastes like Seven Eleven chili. So he gets all offended, and I go. Why are you getting offended? I like 7-Eleven chili. And he's yelling at me. He's like, hey, you son of a bitch. You knew that was my <laughs> chili. And I, said, I go, hey, do yourself a favor. Go take your chili back to 7-Eleven and put it back in the container. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> he was so pissed. I think it's so funny with those moments happen, too. You're like, I said this in a nice one. Yeah. You know, you're like, I, yeah. I like 7-Eleven chili. It's reliable. Listen, don't even get me started on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't affect my YouTube suggestions that aggressively that quickly. I get fed a lot of I get fed a lot of international Seven Eleven videos. So, really? Yeah, and I guess in Japan in particular, it's huge, and like they are, you you like would go eat there, and not in like you okay. know that feel like people are like, oh, well, is the chili actually yeah. good? You're like, no, it actually is. Yeah. yeah. Very funny. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know. I'm a Wawa guy, oh, obviously, I mean, because I'm, yeah. yeah, I mean, from Philly, so, but I, they don't even have chili on, they don't have chili on it. They yeah. wouldn't mess with that. But I would, I, one of my favorite things every time I get a chance though, like I'll hit the coffee bar, which that's always like, I don't know how, I'm always surprised no one's ripped that off from them yet. It's because it seems like such a simple idea. I'm like, what if you just didn't think you just put a bunch of this stuff out ready for me that we can what like and then i'm like oh yeah i'll upsell me the soft pretzel let's go you know <laughs> you know what i think uh, i heard and, and i don't know if this is true or not and I, I'm, i'll make the statement i heard the coffee pays for everything at wawa wouldn't surprise me I'm and then everything so else good. everything else is is profit and i heard the wild the coffee pays for the the operation i bet it does it's crazy right and it's one of those things that like again it's probably like well it's like the coke and uh mcdonald's where they're like yeah yeah, they're making all the money off the soda, and the other things are just advertising costs. I'm like, oh, cool. Well, let me yeah. get a double advertising cost. For the, next cost. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. the Big Mac and the, uh, yeah. I oh my god, man! I can't so remember funny. last time I had McDonald's stuff. Yeah, it's, oh, it's like a lifetime of regret after I. I mean, it's good when yeah, you, when you're eating the it, moment, and yeah. then you're like, oh, you. I, I instantly. And then if, if you wait long enough, it turns back into the box. They that's sell that, the that's what my wife. That's what my wife says. She goes, "It's instant regret, McDonald's. Instant regret." She's like, yeah. as soon as you eat it, you're like, oh, oh yeah. Well, I think with the way, uh, especially here, our restaurant industry is like, we have a really great food scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where, like, look, I moved here a long time ago, and the whole time I've been like, how do I get out? Yeah. I mean, not a mean way, yeah. but it was just like. Uh, it's, it's totally it was for a long time it was totally fine it wasn't a bad place but I definitely it was like I either want to live somewhere that's way worse yeah. or somewhere way better right yeah. or provide me the opportunity and what's been funny is like every time I get close to leaving those opportunities will present themselves to me yeah. and then now yeah like we've got some of like the best I joked with one of my chef friends the other night I was like it's funny that I've been all over the world I've tried all these exotic things but the best version of it here was in like Little Milford, that's Ohio awesome. and that cracks me up that's awesome you know and uh, so it, it's been wild in that regard to see that and I'm assuming well it's kind of be hurt all these fast chains too right because well, it's like I, I, you know. I mean the thing with fast chains is like you know what you're going to get yeah like it's consistent, it's reliable, like you were liable. I do a lot of traveling for work. Yeah. And I love to go to a local spot. Sure. Like I, I'll go, I'm a Yelp guy. I'll go yeah. right on the Yelp and I'll go, okay, this looks interesting. Nine times out of 10, I like it. Yeah. I meet some good people in there. So I, I try to stay away from the fast casual stuff. Plus I, I'm trying to eat healthier. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's not, the fast casual stuff doesn't have, the stuff that you're looking for if you're trying to eat healthy. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and you know, I'm 
getting up in age. I'm 48 years old now, so I got to watch what I eat now. I can't just go out like a kid and just slam burgers and everything else like that. So. That's, the only bad part of aging. In yes. So far, I'm like, wait, you mean I can't do more? Yeah, like, 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 like I, I remember when I was a kid, I could just get wild, eat anything I wanted, drank yeah. anything I wanted, and now, yeah, the fun's over. You know? Right, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> well, I, I always thank my parents. Really they give me a solid. They were really, uh, I wouldn't say strict as the, and, 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 because I feel like that would have too negative a word, but they were yeah. strict on those things. So then I didn't really get a little wild, so I was like in my mid to late 20s. Okay. And then it's like, all right, so I'm yeah. hoping that that has staved off yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I I was the exact opposite. I was wild at like fourteen on, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> straightened out after I had my first my first. That'll son, do it too. That, yeah, that'll, that'll, no kids, so I'm still like, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. still a child inside yes, here. <laughs> yes, you, 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 that 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 responsibility thing creeped up on me. I think twenty two I was when I had my first son, and it was like, I went out and bought just went out and bought diapers. Yeah, and all size one diapers, and I had a closet full of size one diapers and my, my wife at the time says to me she goes you know he's going to grow out of these in like a month I'm like, shit <laughs> but like, I, like, I didn't know I, 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 First I time. barely feed myself oh. let alone now I got to feed this guy and get him yeah. diapers and oh it was that's, that's a that's a tough that's a reality that's when reality hits you in the face see right I'm there. not you're honest about that I feel like most parents do that thing like oh it's just such a magic no. no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It, it there wasn't. Are pros and oh, there's, there. I mean, there, there, there's no. There, there, you'll ne- never feel prouder of your son when they achieve something that you haven't done. That's and right. that's all I want out of my my kids is, is for them to achieve something that I haven't. Yeah. And um, and I think both of them, you know, they they both grown up to be great human beings, so awesome. to speak. So I, I I I think you know they're they're great kids, and and if you meet them. You'll say, you know, that's a great kid. So I, I think I've, we've we've done a decent job at that. Yes, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. One day maybe you'll meet my son. You'll yeah. Be, if you come to I'm if you come to Philly, I'll I'm, give you the Philadelphia treatment. Uh, my one of my main goals of the show this year is to not that I want to get out of the office because it's a very cool. Yeah, office, this is a cool. But place. I do want to go experience some of those things because something I kind of kicked around as a show segment, and I think we talked about this like a year ago was. We get a lot of regional travelers yeah. and like, oh, we get a lot of international too, yeah. right? But like, we do so much international focus. What about some of those little like, hey, what's from your town? That's and so I, I think. So I thing. think I think you would get you guys would get along really well with. I used to work at a, a, an Italian imported cheese company called the Bruno Brothers, and they mm-hmm. have like six six or eight stores in in um, uh, Pennsylvania in the Philadelphia area. They're 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 big in South Philly. They're Italian guys. They're in, Italian market. And sure. I think that would be a good segment for That'd you. That'd be awesome. Yeah. They've been around since like the 1900s, and, so cool. and that would be something that you would, and you'd like the guy, the guy that runs his name's Emilio. He was my my old boss, and um, he 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 reminds you of Robert De Niro. I mean, he yeah. looks like him, he talks like him, and and he he has a personality like him. <laughs> but I think you guys would get along real oh, well. That'd be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys have a lot of the same items they have. It's just it, this this store is something. If you haven't been here, it's a weekend trip. I mean, you really should come it's and just wild, check it out. It? If you if you're into grocery stores, and there's not many people are like, oh my god, yeah, this is something where it's 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 a destination. Yeah, it's not it's not just a grocery store. It's somewhere where you can find some unique stuff and and just it's cool. I mean, I mean even really nice to be here. Some of this year, five days a week, right? I still find something that surprises me. I mean, oh, I two bet. years. I bet. I'm here all the time, and and. More, maybe more importantly for the sake of the audience, is like my job is to go like find these things, right? So even after years of being here doing this, what feels like every day, I am surprised regularly. Oh, I can imagine. I find. Sure. It's so cool. How they find? You should do a segment with Lou and and Bree or one of those folks on like how they find some of these things. Like how does it like? Hint's an easy one, but like how did they come up with? How did they get this item? Yeah. Like an international item. Like, how did you, who brought this to your door you know what's funny? in order to do that? We did. So the early episodes of the show are almost exclusively stuff like that, right? And you would be amazed. So much of it is customer based, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. Because, yeah. Customer because we're independently request. owned. Sure. People, uh, I'm doing this AMA on Reddit this coming week about the store. And one of the questions I saw pop up, and they're already a source of product. So it blew my mind to find out how much stuff we get. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. But it blew my mind so much to find out um, 
how many things are just in the email that came in like, hey, I was in this place and I saw this thing and it was great. You know, funny enough, on the opposite side of my board, one of my guests, he's from Zimbabwe, he wrote, he's like, hey, there's this product called Mazo. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's like, you guys got to try and get it in. I was like, Okay, so I'm just like, but Zimbabwe. email the thing, you know? Yeah, sure. But what's crazy to me, and, and I always love telling the audiences too, is that like, we read those emails. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those emails come in and they're like, hey, that sounds like Sir International. It's sent to them and then they go to see if they can They go find it. They yeah. go find it. Yeah, I mean, there's so many unique items of, of things. I mean, and, and in America, we don't, I mean, there's there's so much stuff around the globe that we just were like, oh, we're not eating that. I mean, yeah. uh, bugs. Right, yeah. <laughs> I got you know, like edible bugs and oh, stuff yeah. like that, like chocolate covered like wasps and stuff like. That. I had a gentleman in from Sweden, and uh, Sam's awesome, and he and I did a bunch of shit. We did a couple shows together, and he did this whole traditional Swedish Christmas that they called the Yule Board mm-hmm. last year. And there were so many things on it that I would have never necessarily like. Not that I would have been against, but would have tried like pickled fish, obviously huge in like the mm-hmm. Scandinavian countries. He got me. How up. was it? Delicious. Yeah. Surprisingly, I like pickled delicious. anything though. I, yeah, right? and I was kind of you know it's funny where it's like I like seafood, but, eggs. but yeah. So pickled eggs are one that I find sometimes it's the worst thing I've ever tried, mm-hmm. and then other times I'm like, oh, it didn't work on these. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but then there's one. I funny enough, so I'm doing this series right now where I'm trying. I'm trying to try every edible product in sure. the store, like little short meals. That's great. Uh, and I have a jar of one of the pickled herrings you get that's in this like mustard sauce. I've been thinking about it for a year. Since did you, we did that video. Because you don't want to do... Oh, oh no, it's good. that good. It's like, oh, okay. it's like one of those where I was like... And it's and if you... Like, knowing me or my taste, like, I like seafood, but maybe not enough to... Like, if you're like, hey, what if we took the thing that you're kind of a little on the fence of, and what if we pickle it? And yeah. I'm like, no. Uh, and then we did it, and it was phenomenal. Yeah, I don't think... I can't remember the last time I had sardines, so... Oh, yeah. Uh, that was another discovery here where, again, I, you know, because I'm thinking growing up, yeah. sardines were a joke in cartoons. Yeah, right? sure. It was yeah. Like, I was like, oh, I'm not trying these. No. And then I tried them. I was like, oh, these are Put delicious. them on our fishing rod. You probably you probably went fishing with them over yes. in uh, Spring Lake. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, put the, put the sardines on there to catch a catch a real fish. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so true, <Yeah>. though, right? <laughs> sure. On the fishing boat at Belmar. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. What a beautiful day this has been, John. Oh, thanks, Mark. Oh, I had to ask you this. What's your favorite flavor in the line? Um, well, I, I would love to tell you that it's watermelon, mm-hmm. um, but right now I'm really digging the grape. The grapes. I mean, the grape just came out. Our coconut is really good, too. Oh, I, mean, I didn't even know you had that. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to get you some in here. Yeah. Our coconut really tastes great, but the grape, um, it just hits. Yeah. Um, so it, it when I first started, we, we, had a, we had a sparkling version. We had a, a sparkling cherry that I really enjoyed. Ooh. Do you also do any of the We don't line? do the sparkling. Okay. Well, here's the reason why we don't do sparkling anymore. We have it online, okay. so I can get you some. Okay. But it's commoditized. Sure. You know, it, you know, I drink a lot of sparkling water, but it, what happens is is you're looking for the deal. It's just like buying Coke or Pepsi. Like sure. You're looking for the deal. Yeah. And, you know, our, our sparkling water is the best tasting sparkling water out in the market, hands down. Just like just like our still water is, no yeah. one the people have tried. Yeah. Pepsi, Coke, all of them have tried to come out with something like this, and they it, they fail. It, it the taste doesn't down it. It doesn't do good. Nestle's sure. come out with it. It doesn't taste good, and you know, Hint has has find found that niche of where people it's like okay, the the, the taste is not overpowering. The taste tastes like the fruit itself, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have that sweet aftertaste. Yeah, and and people have really gained toward. But yeah, but for me, the grape flavor has that little bit more of an extra cut. And and like I say, we don't do sparkling because of that. that makes I'd sense. love to, to to come back out with it. We just we just introduced cans for food service for oh, sustainability, cool. so we we have that option now. Um, Hint in the can, we and we launched it at Target. Um, this we did an in and out with Target this week at a, I think it was like thirteen hundred stores. Wow. Where we, we did a variety pack of our cans just to try it out. Yeah. Um, but we're just getting into starting to do cans. But really, sustainability wise, this you know people are you know the plastic police are out there and everything else like that. But this is the best model right now as long as it's been recycled to, to deliver it to customers cheaply. Yeah. Because cans are, are cans are, are the aluminum never gets recycled. Right. And it it goes in the ground and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, the plastic, nine times out of ten, is going to get recycled. Everything on this bottle is recyclable. The cap, everything. Oh, cool. Everything's 100% recyclable. 
And the fuel that this takes to what a can takes or glass mm -hmm. to get from A to B, carbon emissions are out are, are through the roof. Really? This is the best deliverable. Wow. Right now, this is the best deliverable option right now. Makes sense, then. I'm so, I, you know, I hate to admit this publicly, but I'm just going to. It's sure. like, oh, I don't know. I don't know enough about the recycling process. Sure. So it's like, I mean, because I, you know, you hear it conflicting on both ends. So like, this one is the, this was the way, this one's not the way. I am glad to hear that you all have made it, a consistent or a concerted effort rather. America has. Yeah. The rest of the world has. It, um, That's the biggest problem. Oh. The, the, you know, America has made a concerted effort to recycle, to keep the oceans clean and yeah. everything else like that. The rest of the world. <laughs> I'm just, Everyone has. I'm sitting here dangerously close to my pro littering uh, soapbox that I like to get yeah. out every so yeah. often. Nobody litters anymore. Well, I have this Remember theory days? where. Yeah, yeah, I do. And when I, I have this. Okay, I'm just going to tell you my theory. And this is where I, this is how I get canceled. Uh, uh, <laughs> I am pro littering, right? Because okay. I'm enough of a hippie to be like, we should save the planet. But I'm also enough of a hippie to go. Why is this part of land not okay, but the one across the street is okay to just throw it there? Sure. And I believe that humans are out of sight, out of mind kind of people. And so I don't know. I don't know anything about my trash. I just know. Here's what I know. I put it in a bucket and, and then somebody, somewhere. and it disappears. Okay. And I don't think that that's been beneficial for me because I'm only now thinking because we just had this conversation. I'm like, you know what? I am going to look into how the, they recycle bottles and cans and stuff sure. like that. Like, I'm curious now. Otherwise not. And I think about things like, well, we invented public sanitation because people were tired of seeing shit in the street. Well, that's true. Right? And well, I'm like- that and, and, it, and it cured a lot of diseases well, by getting right? it's like, But it was like <laughs> twofold, right? Yeah. You know, and they were like, oh, so we have these problems. We see it all the time. We're dealing with it in this weird way. And then, all right, well, let's figure out how to clean it. And now there's not like a global waste initiative. We just figured it out. So I'm like, well, yeah. maybe I should throw a bottle yeah. in the street and hopefully we'll figure it out. And then someone's going to hear this and just be like, that is this, the same You thing. can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you're right. I can't do it, but we should do it because I think that's I, how we save the planet. I think, I think, um, I remember back <laughs> in the day it was, there was, a, there was, a, when they had used to have litter in it, people would just chuck it. And, and now if you, if you see that, people are like, oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. Yeah. But, um, you know, you, you got to have, you know, when the prisoners need to get out of jail sometimes and pick up the trash too, or you need to teach the kids some lessons. Yeah. Maybe, they, you know, you got more trash from the pickup. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, there is that thing. Now that I'm thinking back to some of the things we've talked about, there is that angle of like minimalism that's going through everything, right? On the aesthetic level, everything. And everybody's very focused on the beautification of the lands where I'm like, well, these lands might not exist if we just keep hiding it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. That's my concern. Sure. I mean, I don't, good, so I'm not too worried about it ultimately. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I am planning on living forever. So there's that whole thing. That Thanks right? to the curse you, that was put to me in a cave. <laughs> you too, right? Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. You know? It's working. Oh my gosh. It's um, it here, let me get a Jungle Gyms exclusive maybe. Are, are there any new flavors on the horizon besides the grape that are coming? I can uh, see no, you have all the new ones now. Okay. Uh, we, we, we will have a couple of new items coming out in 2024, 2025-ish. Okay. Okay. We're, we're kicking around a few i we're kicking around a few functional ideas. Okay. Oh, I like right. oh, that. Yeah. That's so interesting. Nothing, nothing set in stone yet for me to announce. Yes. Okay. You know? No, that's fine. But, but hey, maybe when that time comes, we can come back. I could do. Well, that. I'll come to you. You we'll can. Well, you're gonna come. To, you're gonna come to Philly, and then I I'm gonna give you the. This. I'm gonna give you the. And and, and I'll. Matter of fact, when, after I'm done, I'll I'll set you up with those guys, and then see if they're interested. They'll, I think they'll be interested yeah, in doing fun. like a cross promotion yeah, with you great. guys. Because you might even, I, I, if I walk to your cheese section, I bet you they have their cheese in your store. Yeah, they they sell cheese spreads too. So. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that sounds good. I think I'm so. I'm here for cheese bread. Yeah. John, it's been an absolute pleasure today. Thanks so Mark, much for your time. You're the best, brother. Yeah, this is awesome. Hey, what before we go, Yeah. what's the deal on Hint? Because you, you, you announce it every single time. Oh, what? this week. I don't know what the deal is. I didn't oh, read the, I didn't oh, where's read the, the ad, man? Where's the ad? You already had this job? It's in the Jungle Gyms application. I've never been so glad to have that downloaded. And I know it just did an update last night. Let's find out. Oh, we the ad. Hold on. Where See? are we at with the hints? I, I, I noticed. I noticed. I did note it last week because I know we had a sale. We were doing nine ninety nine on the variety packs last week. Yes. But now, is that the same price? Hopefully. <clears throat> Should be. Lou got a great deal. Yes, Lou did get a great Lou deal. Lou worked me. Yeah, I bet. He hit you with it. He's like, I'll buy it for a nickel. <laughs> Classic Lou. <laughs> but you know what? I love it about him. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, no. And now it's like, uh-oh. 
I don't think they, I don't think it's in the oh, current oh, yet. Oh, the deal. Oh. I know. I'm so oh, sorry. Gotta, we're gonna get so, it now. It's probably still on sale, but maybe we just didn't. Oh wait, wait, wait. Every, nope. Everybody, That's yell it. at Lou and make sure he puts it on sale again. I hit week. it with that boo, Lou. Boo, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Lou. But I will encourage. It. Look, everybody that watches this knows. Yep. I don't often make it through 30 ounces in an interview, <laughs> but I'm 32 now in. Now you got to go pee, right? Yeah, I've been, def- I've been thinking the whole time. A lot of cross legs happening over here. Uh, I did cherry and watermelon today. They were both delicious. You'll see me talk with one of the world's, um, well, depending on that may have aired before this. But anyway, you'll see me drink the grape with one of the world's grape experts. That was very cool. I'm the hike. I didn't know blackberries in the lineup. Oh, yeah. Pineapple, always a winner. So oh, I just polished off yeah amazing john you were great come back anytime oh thanks mark you sure yeah i I think so all right brother what a great episode. So we still got some great conversation out there. And look, it's probably a benefit. Not everyone wants to hear me all the time. Uh, most people don't. Um, but I, you know, I do want to break up. Thanks everyone that watches the show. Thank you all have subscribed to us on YouTube. Thanks to everybody on the TikTok commenting and all that stuff. I promise the live streams are coming back soon. I just, I'm a little gun shy. Let's just be honest with it. When you get banned, for doing a regular store tour in a cheese department of your store and you're just like hi this is cheese and then your account goes away after it It, like i I threw out like a year and a half of work you know not just for me but for lucky too right like it was disappointing so i'm like I'm, i'm trying to get over that not necessarily fear but that hurdle of like how do we dive back into this well you know because i'm really trying to ramp those giveaways back up too because i got so much stuff in my office i still want to give you all so on that i want to thank you all again have a nice glass of hint if you get a chance I just saw we got these in giant bottles in the store too, which I'm excited. I drink way too much liquid. It might be a problem. I don't think it is yet. No doctors have said it is, but uh, I do take in a lot of liquid throughout the day. I did count recently and I was like, wow, by noon, I was like close to 150 ounces of not just water, but like liquid in general. I was like, oh, this could be an issue. No wonder I have to walk to the restroom so often. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate all of your support. Thank you for the love and the kindness and all those good things. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll see you out there in the aisles. The Jungle Gyms podcast is recorded in the WJJI studio inside Jungle Gyms International Market in Fairfield, Ohio. The Jungle Gyms podcast is produced and hosted by Mark Borison.